Maybe. But that's the thing, like, who is your saving grace here for MVG, right? Harley, Joel Crew. Joel Crew is so far away from that. Oh! Harley, though, able to survive just oh! a bit. Oh! 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 Chiku, guys, from the backside. Oh! Now they're going to find Joel Crew as we were just talking about him. They fall here, and another one goes down. Four fall again for MVG. And there's nothing Dragon can do here to defend. It's a maniac for Chiku, guys. GG, Ooh. well played. We are resetting here. 13,000 oh. HP. They need to make a choice right now. I mean, the, the minions are pushing in into their base. They're going to get back to it by Call TZ if they don't choose now. Oh my god, oh my god, Call TZ. Will they read this? Jumbo trying to delay, but no, my god. 505 trying to fly. Sanford, yeah, we huh? go, Sanford. Call TZ. Oh my god. In the back oh Daddy QT, the base, the base echo outplayed RSG. But we just barely missed it off camera. What happened to Papa Dog? He just got dog piled on, and that will be the end of him. As you can see, S11 going for a different approach right here, jumping in, making a play with the way of the dragon as well. But the vengeance is just taking so much damage. Oh, no! Oh, 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 oh. That's Fight Chicken taking one, one versus three. Erwin is an H target, and Fight oh, Chicken no. is going again and again. The Lord gets picked yes, up and come out on top, and it's so disastrous because the Lord is up at the same time. Incendio is still contesting, but it does not seem possible unless Alien can make some of a, something of a miracle play. We've seen a miracle play by a Grok many times before. He's looking for it. He has the weapon mastery for a reason. Oh! He steals it for Turkey, for Incendio, to save the game for his team. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. Whoa. I'm, I'm, I'm Whoa. ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Wise, killing spree emblem on the Aldus. Sure. Uh, I get why, but right now, wait a minute, Naomi gets a hook onto Wise right now. It's going to be Justin who rotates back in. Wise goes in, and it's the first blood over to Justin. Oh, yeah. oh. Ken, that was a worth it. What oh, oh, no! the hook and Haji tries to run away. I can't get my point out. Justin goes in front, gets the kill. Dashing back in, Edward using final blow, not able to find anyone, and that's the iron hook again. Naomi's won. 2030 vision where they just literally see the future. Oh, oh, there's no, no way. Naomi finds a hook out of nothing again. He in cares for the future. Whatever it is you want to believe, he yeah. says again. Naomi. Above the sky. They are right now. They're flying and they're soaring no. again. Naomi. What? what in the world was that? This still works out, right? They all of that in the last what? two minutes just makes a breeze for the first turtle here. So that's already huge, at least in in terms of economy. But here in the mid lane, Yumi's going to be the focus again. Oh, can he get what? away? One hit, he's going to bob and weave and survive. The what? moves and grooves. Moves behind. And yeah, I can see here the Lord is already um. Yeah. Exhausted. It doesn't feel like Br uh, that uh, Bray is chilling. He's doing so much for his team with splitting those waves. But once again, the contest for the Lord. The fight. Oh my god, catches Subin with that Tyrant's Rage. Mortal pops everywhere. Baby Cake, the first one down. Not a good sign as one, two, three, four bodies has oh, already Bray? been collected. And Bray gets shut down. And he did, I don't even think it was uh, Ken who finished off Hesa. He finished off D7, and this allows another free turtle. But now they're going for it. Certainly, he's going to be popped here. Ken able to secure the turtle, but Zip goes down as Chima able to find the kill. Another wild charge comes forth as D7 oh. falls. Tempest Blade is going to be popped here. Ken looking for Hessa. Can't oh. get the last hit, though, as he falls into the river. Oh, that split split, but all the weakest points. Oh, my God, again. It's Prince Fran who comes in clutch and saves the day. On an eSports set, nowhere to go right now, but Dragon's going to be taken down. It's a shadow kill over to Harley as now Mount Venus have to move back. The Iron Hook does not connect. It's going to be the way the Dragon locking Prince Fran down. And that's a double kill picked up by Dreon. The Lord as well. Dreon is an absolute maniac. monster as he's maniac. looking to claim a no. maniac. Kind of be a little bit patient because right now I kind of feel like Rosa as well as Sunshine, they have enough damage. They just need a proper setup. Yeah. And in terms of proper setup, you shout out Oheb. If they can catch him, that's great. But it's, it's easy to set it's not. But oh my Venus, it's all for them. That's all the damage popped in. And the back line's completely going to be obstructed here by Blacklist International. Oh, Hefri hitting his alien's gonna be bursted down. Oh my Rose god, oh, the what? Is the what? only man left standing. Blacklist International, what? they take no prisoners.
Championship will be gathered in Jakarta, Indonesia. One dream and one goal only. To make sure all the players, teams, and fans alike are on the same page, it is time to reveal the tournament format. In M4, all the qualified teams will compete in two stages to achieve greatness. Group stage and the knockout stage. The teams will play a best of one single round robin during the group stage. No team will be eliminated during the group stage. Now, let's take a look at the knockout stage format. It'll feature a double elimination bracket with a total of 22 series. The first two rounds of the lower bracket will be the best of three. The other series will be best of five. Except for the grand finals, which will be best of seven. Now the knockout stage upper bracket will feature the top two teams of each group from the group stage. And the bottom two teams will start at the lower bracket. The losers of the first round of the lower bracket will be eliminated. The M4 knockout stage will be spread out across nine days, where there will be a live audience for fans like you to support your teams. And that's all you need to know about M4's tournament format. Remember to tune in and see you in Jakarta. Dare to dream. Dare to be great. What's up everyone? Today we have a hero revamp many of you have been waiting for. Featuring Hanabi, the Scarlet Flower. The new Hanabi is more mature and confident in herself, as seen in her new intro animation where she finally takes off her veil. Hero skills. Hanabi is a marksman that brings solid DPS and crowd control to a team and known for her bouncing pedal blades. Passive skill, Ninjutsu Pedal Barrage. That's right, Pedal Barrage is now Hanabi's new passive. With this adjustment, Hanabi's basic attacks and skills automatically create pedal blades on hit that bounce up to four times to nearby targets while doing less damage per bounce. First skill, Ninjutsu Equinox. Hanabi's shield has been reworked into an active skill. The new Equinox shield now increases her movement and attack speed. Hanabi is still immune to control effects while the shield is active, but now dealing damage will increase the shield's health regardless of Hanabi's HP. Second skill, Ninjutsu Soul Scroll. Soul Scroll remains a skill shot that damages and slows enemies on hit, now with a new mechanic that marks enemies causing them to take full damage from the next Pedal Blade Bounce. Ultimate Forbidden Jutsu, Higan Bana. Hanabi's ultimate remains unchanged, damaging and immobilizing the first enemy hit. The revamped Hanabi retains her uniqueness without needing to stack her shield before a fight, and her Pedal Blades are now a more consistent source of damage. Her new shield mechanic improves her sustain mid-fight so she can stay in and on her targets. Pro Tips. 
Use Equinox when you anticipate incoming CC and deal damage to keep it up. Don't panic if you get engaged on. Cast your shield and keep attacking. Line up enemies with Soul Scroll to cut their mobility while boosting your damage. And look to use Higon Bana when the enemy is grouped up. Combo Tips when laning, use Soul Scroll to slow and mark enemies, so your next Pedal Blade Bounce does full damage even if they're hiding in the back. In a 1v1, use your shield's new sustain to get the upper hand. In teamfights, land your second skill first to make the enemy easy targets for your ultimate and let your Pedal Blades go to town. Tactics. Since Hanabi's early game is rather weak, focus on farming, but not for the whole game, Hanabi mains. Poke the enemy in lane with basic attacks and her second skill. In the late game, use Hanabi's ultimate to engage and CC, and unleash your barrage of basic attacks and kunai to provide excellent sustained DPS for your team. We recommend this attack speed focused build to complement her reworked passive and first skill. Marksman Emblem further enhances her sustained DPS role, and Weakness Finder prevents her targets from escaping. Inspire is a natural choice to bolster both damage and survivability, thanks to her new shield. Hanabi, the Scarlet Flower, revamp coming December 20th. She'll be 30% off the first week, along with her resplendent iris skin. Give the new Hanabi a whirl and tell us what you think. Until next time, we'll be seeing you in the Land of Dawn. Hanabi, the Scarlet Flower, revamped December 20th. You'll be the most shining light in the universe. The star will be burned for you, my flare.
life. They've been talking to me on me, but you know they'll never win. I'm controlling all my victories. And something has got to give, cause it's just what I made it now, made it now. M-Series Flashback, the Finals MVP. Every tournament will have its own most valuable player or MVP. Welcome to Mobile Legends. Back in M1, it was Aura of EVOS Legends with his masterful off-plane plays to clinch the award. Aura! And be the first ever Finals MVP in Mobile Legends M Series. Meanwhile, in M2, amidst the pandemic, Carl TZ of Bren Esports proved that his flashy jungler plays were the top of the world. Okay, anyways, they oh. immediately traded out. Make that three members chasing him down, and there's only so much. 
2021, Oheb of Blackness International showed why he is the Filipino sniper with his spectacular Beatrix and marksman prowess. You're in the early game. Another fight engaged on White Edge, but allowed Asmo still able to run away, but Oheb oh, comes in, so he goes in for 1v3 play, oh a mistake as he gets shot down. And claim the title of M3's Finals MVP. Who do you think will join these players on the Hall of Legends? Can Carl TC or Oheb claim the title twice? Who will be M4's Finals MVP? See you at M4. M-Series Flashback, The Dark Horse. Welcome to Mobile Legends. 2019, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, nobody guessed that Todak, a debutant for MPL Malaysia Singapore, then would qualify for M1. They topped their group stage with aggressive gameplay. They get a mega kill, they're walking in to win this game. Todak take game one. And end up being the second runner-up of the first ever M-Series. Fast forward to M2. After dominating the Myanmar MLBB scene for a few seasons, Burmese Ghoul finally shines at the world stage. And they decimate Brandy Sports from underneath their Ooh. own power. It's going to be Flaptizi who's going to get caught out here, stuck against the... That's going to be GG. Burmese Ghouls take the fifth round. Dominated the competition and extended the grand finals to a full seven-game series. And in M3, North America represents. BTK rises above all expectations when they defeated Blacklist International in the upper bracket. The break for it. They flicker on for it. They find another kill. That's two. They can get the third. Oh, they oh. have done it. And pummeled their way to the lower bracket finals without any coach and team staff. M4 is finally coming. Which team do you think will rise to greatness and be the next dark horse? See you at M4. M Series Flashback, Series of the Tournament. Welcome to Mobile Legends. As the first M Series for MLBB, M1 was nothing short of incredible gameplay. But one series was above all the games. Stretched to a maximum best of seven series, the grand finals between RRQ Hoshi and EVOS Legends was a gem to rewatch. EVOS Legends become a legend! As for M2, the grand finals between Grand Esports and the Burmese Ghouls was so epic that it broke the record with over 3 million concurrent viewers. With multiple back and forth, the seven game series went the way of Grand Esports. Grand Esports are your M2 champions! Lastly, in M3, the series of the tournament was the first upper bracket game between Blacklist International and BTK, where the agents tried to target and five ban Boba Zane, but the bloodthirsty kings persevered and sent Blacklist International to the lower bracket. With M4, what sort of insane and epic series do you think we will get? Tell us what you think. See you at M4.
talking to me on me, but you know they'll never win. I'm controlling all my victory, and something has got to give, cause what's the truth is what I made it now. You're the greatest, don't you know? 
you live only once. Or once, leave the comfort zone and raise yourself up. Find a new environment. Live life in a different way. Follow your heart. Learn a new thing. Go for a new challenge. Risk of your life through a wonderful journey. Is it wrong to save him? The war took my family, my friend, took everything I have. It's the Society of Dawn that gave me a place I can call home. Taught me to fight. And placed their trust in me. New mission. Infiltrate the abyssal wings. And then he showed up. It seems we can bring back a trusted friend. <sighs> There's a traitor among us. Who? No idea. Rest up. I'll figure it out. No! Cheer up. I'm nothing like... They came along and gave me out. Attack the headquarter. Who are you? Maybe. But that's the thing, like, who is your saving grace here for MVG, right? Harley, Joel Crew. Joel Crew is so far away from that. Oh! Harley, though, able to survive just oh! a bit. Oh! Oh! Chiku, guys, from the backside. Oh! Now they're going to find Joel Crew as we were just talking about him. They fall here, and another one goes down. Four fall again for MVG. And there's nothing Dragon can do here to defend. It's a maniac for Chiku, guys. GG, well played. We are resetting here. 13,000. Oh.
1,000 HP. They need to make a choice right now. I mean, the, the minions are pushing in into their base. They're going to get backdoored by Kalatizi if they don't choose now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Kalatizi, will they read this? Junpo trying to delay, but no, my God. 505 trying to fly. Sanford, yeah, we go, Sanford. Kalatizi in the back oh side. Daddy QT, the base. The base echo outplayed. RSG. But we just barely missed it off camera. What happened to Papa Dog? He just got dogpiled on, and that will be the end of him. As you can see, S11 going for a different approach right here. Jumping in, making a play with the way of the Dragon as well, but the Vengeance is just taking so much damage. Oh, no! Oh, 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 oh. That's Fight Chicken taking one! One versus three! Everyone is an H target, and Fight oh, Chicken no. is going again and again. The Lord gets picked yes. up and Look come out on top, and it's so disastrous because the Lord is up at the same time. Incendio is still contesting, but it does not seem possible unless Alien can make some of a, something of a miracle play. We've seen a miracle play by a Grok many times before. He's looking for it. He has the weapon mastery for a reason. Oh! He steals it for Turkey, for Incendio, to save the game for his team. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Wise, killing spree emblem on the Aldus. Sure. Uh, I get why, but right now, wait a minute, Naomi gets a hook onto Wise right now. It's gonna be Justin who rotates back in. Wise goes in, and it's the first blood over to Justin. Oh, Ken, that was a worth it. Look at that! Oh! Look at the hook! And Haji tries to run away! I can't get my point out! Justin goes in front, gets a kill! Dashing back in, Edward using final blow, not able to find anyone, and that's the iron hook again! Naomi's won! 2030 vision where they just literally see the future. Oh my oh, God, because that's that's way. Way. There's no way! Naomi finds a hook out of nothing again! He cares for the future. Whatever it is you want to believe, he no! has again! Naomi! Of the sky. They are right now. They're flying and they're soaring no! again! Naomi! What? what in the world was that? this still works out, right? They All of that in the last what? two minutes just makes a breeze for the first turtle here. So that's already huge, at least in, in terms of economy. But here in the mid lane, Yoomsi is going to be the focus again. Oh, Can he get what? away? One hit, he's going to bob and what? weave and survive. The what? moves and grooves. Moves and Behind. And yeah, I can see here the Lord is already um. Yeah. Exhausted. It doesn't feel like uh, that uh, Bray is chilling. He's doing so much for his team with splitting those waves. But once again, the contest for the they Lord. The fight. Oh my God, catches Zubin with that Tyrant's Rage. Mortal pops everywhere. Baby Cake, the first one down. Not a good sign as one, two, three, four bodies has oh, already Bray? been collected. And Bray gets shut down. And, and he did, I don't even think it was uh, Ken who finished off Hesa. He finished off D7 and this allows another free turtle. But now they're going for it. Certainly he's going to be popped here. Ken able to secure the turtle, but Zip goes down as Chima able to find the kill. Another wild charge comes forth as D7 oh. falls. Tempest Blade's going to be popped here. Ken looking for Hessa. Can't oh. get the last hit though as he falls into the river. Oh, that split split, but all the way this points. Oh my god, again! It's Prince Fran who comes in clutch and saves the day. On an esports set, nowhere to go right now, but Dragon's going to be taken down. It's a shadow kill over to Harley as now Mount Venus have to move back. The Iron Hook does not connect. It's going to be the way the Dragon locking Prince Fran down. And that's a double kill picked up by Dreon, the Lord as well. Dreon is an absolute Maniac. monster as he's Maniac. looking to claim a no. Maniac. Kind of be a little bit patient because right now I kind of feel like Rosa as well as Sunshine, they have enough damage. They just need a proper setup. Yeah. And in terms of proper setup, you shout out Oheb. If they can catch him, that's great. But it's, it's easy to say it's not. But oh my Venus, it's all for them. That's all the damage popped in. And the back line's completely going to be obstructed here by Blacklist International. Oh, Hefri hitting his aliens going to be bursted down. Oh, my Rosa God. Oh, oh, what? Nexus, he's the what? only man left standing. Blacklist International, what? they take no prisoners. World Championship will be gathered in Jakarta, Indonesia. One dream and one goal only. Make sure all the players, teams, and fans alike are on the same page. Well, it is time to reveal the legend. tournament format. In M4, all the qualified teams will compete in two stages to achieve greatness. Group stage and the knockout stage. 
The teams will play a best of one single round robin during the group stage. No team will be eliminated during the group stage. Now, let's take a look at the knockout stage format. It'll feature a double elimination bracket with a total of 22 series. The first two rounds of the lower bracket will be the best of three. The other series will be best of five. Except for the grand finals, which will be best of seven. Now the knockout stage upper bracket will feature the top two teams of each group from the group stage. And the bottom two teams will start at the lower bracket. The losers of the first round of the lower bracket will be eliminated. The M4 knockout stage will be spread out across nine days, where there will be a live audience for fans like you to support your teams. And that's all you need to know about M4's tournament format. Remember to tune in and see you in Jakarta. Dare to dream, dare to be great. What's up, everyone? Today we have a hero revamp many of you have been waiting for. Featuring Hanabi, the Scarlet Flower. The new Hanabi is more mature and confident in herself, as seen in her new intro animation, where she finally takes off her veil. Hero Skills. Hanabi is a marksman that brings solid DPS and crowd control to a team and known for her bouncing pedal blades. Passive skill, Ninjutsu Pedal Barrage. That's right, Pedal Barrage is now Hanabi's new passive. With this adjustment, Hanabi's basic attacks and skills automatically create pedal blades on hit that bounce up to four times to nearby targets while doing less damage per bounce. First skill, Ninjutsu Equinox. Hanabi's shield has been reworked into an active skill. The new Equinox shield now increases her movement and attack speed. Hanabi is still immune to control effects while the shield is active, but now dealing damage will increase the shield's health regardless of Hanabi's HP. Second skill, Ninjutsu Soul Scroll. Soul Scroll remains a skill shot that damages and slows enemies on hit, now with a new mechanic that marks enemies causing them to take full damage from the next pedal blade bounce. Ultimate Forbidden Jutsu, Higan Bana. Hanabi's ultimate remains unchanged, damaging and immobilizing the first enemy hit. The revamped Hanabi retains her uniqueness without needing to stack her shield before a fight, and her pedal blades are now a more consistent source of damage. Her new shield mechanic improves her sustain mid-fight so she can stay in and on her targets. Pro Tips. Use Equinox when you anticipate incoming CC and deal damage to keep it up. Don't panic if you get engaged on. Cast your shield and keep attacking. Line up enemies with Soul Scroll to cut their mobility while boosting your damage. And look to use Higon Bana when the enemy is grouped up. Combo Tips. 
When laning, use Soul Scroll to slow and mark enemies, so your next Pedal Blade bounce does full damage even if they're hiding in the back. In a 1v1, use your shield's new sustain to get the upper hand. In teamfights, land your second skill first to make the enemy easy targets for your ultimate and let your pedal blades go to town. Tactics. Since Hanabi's early game is rather weak, focus on farming, but not for the whole game, Hanabi mains. Poke the enemy in lane with basic attacks and her second skill. In the late game, use Hanabi's ultimate to engage and CC and unleash your barrage of basic attacks and kunai to provide excellent sustained DPS for your team. We recommend this attack speed focused build to complement her reworked passive and first skill. Marksman Emblem further enhances her sustained DPS role and Weakness Finder prevents her targets from escaping. Inspire is a natural choice to bolster both damage and survivability, thanks to her new shield. Hanabi, the Scarlet Flower, revamp coming December 20th. She'll be 30% off the first week, along with her resplendent iris skin. Give the new Hanabi a whirl and tell us what you think. Until next time, we'll be seeing you in the Land of Dawn. Hanabi, the Scarlet Flower, revamp December 20th.
remember. So many times I lie in the basement waiting for greatness. No, I won't listen to anyone hating on me and telling me I wouldn't make it. Cause I did everything that they said I couldn't. Caught my footing and I kept the controls. I stand for something. I ain't running now.
from 16 teams down to the last two of the strongest in all the regions. We have now come to the final stage in the land of dawn. Fans across the globe have united to behold the greatness. Dari 16 tim tersisa dua tim terkuat dari seluruh region. Saat ini kita sudah berada di puncak fans dari seluruh dunia bersatu untuk menyaksikan the greatness. This is Mobile Legends Bang Bang. This is M4 World Championship. Dare to be great. It's a great day for some Mobile Legends Bang Bang esports action live from the Tennis Indoor Senayan in beautiful Jakarta, Indonesia. At your service, my name is Leo. Joined here by Gideon, Mirko, and Chi the Ico. Let's take a look back at history and talk about the M Series World Championships. There's a lot that went down in the past couple of weeks before we crown another world champion. But let's take a trip down memory lane. Gideon, you were there during M1. It was live from, from, from Malaysia. Yes, it was. It was a beautiful event and more importantly, an incredible story of EVOS turning things around and really living up to the name of EVOS Legends. Drop down to the lower and then pushing it all the way back to the Grand Finals. Looking back in history, that was the age of Indonesian domination. The Grand Finals were between EVOS Legends and RRQ Hoshi and I think that set a good, I guess, foundation for the scene that we have now. You know, after that as well, we saw that Indonesian MLBB just grew so much more. And we saw the development of every single team leading up to M2, where it all came down to a Myanmar versus Philippines Grand Finals. Carl Tizi, the player you see in Echo right now, was the same jungler that got the finals MVP back in M2, winning the World Championship for Bren Esports. The way they were able to do it though, my goodness, they started a pattern here, Leo, that future tournaments follow through. Lower bracket champions from Bren. Oh, now here's a visual again from Akshata Arena. This is, this is a, a, a scene that you were live from. Mm -hmm. uh, Gideon, can you tell us real quick again, how did that feel? Look, it felt incredible to have the crowd, to have the Indonesian fans, the Malaysian fans, people from across the world came to check out M1 and the story that unfolded incredible and that's why you know mobile legends is where it is today because of that very first step that very first indonesian standard that was set and being the first mpl region to have a franchise and you've been a part of it here for a while now how important was it that indonesia took the first steps uh in, in establishing what we have today again they went the distance four to three four to three and it was kind of a reverse sweep, right? Up against RRQ. Again, this set the stage for two of the biggest teams in Indonesia. We're seeing right now that in terms of viewership as well, MPL Indonesia has flourished since M1. And you can kind of say that in terms of viewership, we're number one right now, right? With all the teams, again, coming up, playing with their new rosters and even importing players, we can see the level of competition rising from Season 9, even from Season 8 to now Season 10, and it's going to continue to rise. G, that was back in 2019. What was it like for you watching from across the world? Uh, so across the world, it was amazing, you know. Uh, 2019, I think that was when I actually started my Mobile Legend career. So that was when I was dabbling into it and, you know, diving into eSports. Uh, it wasn't around then, you know, like I in NA. So I occasionally watched, but it was at a different time zone. But uh, I loved it. I loved it when I did get a, you know, a sneak peek. Were you a supporter of Gosu, who was also present during M1? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm trying to get a read here. Supporter, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, Gosu, Gosu was good. Team Gosu was good. Um, I was a, a big fan. Yeah, I mean anything NA, I try to follow. And NA has a budding uh, and developing scene. Uh, I believe more will be injected into that region in 2023, given the Valley's performance. And they started that in M3. We'll be taking a look back at M3 in just a bit, uh, wherein we uh, held that in lovely Singapore. Two world championships were actually held in Singapore, uh, and that was M2 and M3. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and move along because, again, tonight is all about 
the next championship. It's M4. Only one will go home with the trophy. Let's go ahead and see who. Clara and I are here with two gorgeous girls all the way from the Philippines. Dexy, one of the most popular content creators and the owner, co-owner of Blacklist International, Alodia. Hello. 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 Selamat siang, cantik. Hello. <laughs> you know what it means? Hello, good afternoon, pretty. Oh, thanks for teaching us. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Now, regardless what happens, Philippines will come out a winner. How proud are you that it once again, Philippines versus Philippines in the grand finals? Actually, it is very surreal because this is kind of reminiscent from the M3 tournament last year. And I'm just really proud to be able to get this far because Blacklist didn't have really like an easy path. All the teams were doing really well in this tournament. So I wish them luck for this match. Okay, kalau dia benar-benar nggak menyangka ini akan terjadi lagi Philippines lawan Philippines seperti halnya di M3. Tapi melihat perjalanan Blacklist yang nggak mudah, dia benar-benar proud, dia benar-benar bangga terhadap anak-anak dari tim Philippines yang bertemu kembali di M4. Dexy, how about you, Dexy? All I can say is hashtag Pinoy Pride. Pinoy Pride. Ooh. Hashtag Pinas Lang Malakas. Pinas Lang Malakas. Now tell us why. What's so great about both teams? What do you see in both teams? Let's start with Echo. Echo is really good and um, I think they're a difficult opponent. And all I can say is they're young players, which is Sanji and Sanford has a bright future ahead. So I hope uh, they can help their families after this M4. Wow, untuk Eko sendiri dari Dexy melihat bahwa ini adalah tim yang sangat kuat apalagi dengan dua bintang muda yang begitu bersinar. Semoga yang terbaik untuk player Eko tentunya. Kecil lo dia. For Blacklist, I'm just really um, impressed by how they carry themselves. I mean, um, even if they've won back then, they always stay hungry and it never gets to their head. Wow, mereka benar-benar pengen banget kemenangan ini. And it it's for the Filipinos because this is grand final for Filipinos. Now, let's do a prediction. Because you seem to have superpowers. You can predict the future. Predict. What's the outcome? Alright, so my prediction for this match is that Philippines will win. Philippines will win! Alright! That's, right. that's the message. Philippines will win. And that's true. <laughs> Let's check that oh. out. Now, we've come to a long journey. All the way here to the Grand Finals. Let's take a look at how all the teams got here. We are here in Jakarta, where the M4 knockout stage is taking place. Who's 
looking for it. Yao Wei jumps in, takes the kill away, but it's gonna be AB! This could be bad, but wow. Falcon Kyrie finds Naomi. Taylor can get a double, make it a triple. That's a full team wipe for Onik. Welcome to The, the M Room. Room. Clara, we have a lot of comments right now on TikTok. Fans has been posting video and messages to support the teams, Mara. How are we gonna take a look on some of them, Mara? Let's check them out. Let's go. In here, let's pick Taylor, our first feature right here. It says, Blacklist with our comfort oh. picks equals disaster for the other team. The we've Ubi heard strat. Yeah, the Ubi strat, and we've heard Oh My Venus saying over and over that the biggest mistake the opponent makes is when they do not ban her Estes. Mm, keep that in mind. Ooh. Let's make another comment. I don't know, Estes. Okay. How Next. about this one right here? Lord Skylar. Wow. Skylar's posting on TikTok. Oh, same. Same thing. Venus with Estes be like free roaming to disrupt Echo. Do you think Echo's gonna make the same mistake again, not mm, banning this I Estes? I don't think so. They miss its other couple times, so... This is gonna be a something different for both of the teams. Something different. I really wanna see Oh My Venus if using the SS using the SS M3 skin. That would be a statement. Yes. Let's take a look at another comment. How about. Hey, Gideon is here. That's Gideon. Gideon right there. What's Gideon saying? <laughs> oh, this is the prediction of us Echo or Blacklist? How about for you, Echo or Blacklist? It's kinda hard. Both of them are strong, but. Mm, Blacklist is super strong. Oh, he thinks it's gonna be Echo, Echo one zero first. Okay, lots of people are predicting Echo, right now. Wow. So make sure comment on TikTok. Let us know what your thoughts are. Claire, let's take a look at another comment. Who we yes. get feature right now? Let's go. We got lots of comment and videos here, Mara. Oh, there's you also. Oh, how about? What, what is he saying right here? This one right let's there. Let's go. Esports from ID. Esports Indonesia. Oh, Rahasia Bocil says that the secret of the boys from Echo Philippines, they didn't get pressed on the M4. And everyone is questioning how Blacklist is so strong. But you know, Echo, you can see these two boys right here, that Sanjay and Sanford, 16 and 17 year old. They're the first timers here in the M series, already making a statement. It's going to be a bright future for the both of them. Yeah, Let's pick another one. For sure. Let's go, find another one. Ooh. Grangers, right over here. Grangers bam, bam, is saying, bam. wishing luck to the whole Echo team. Can't let Blacklist getting that back 
to back. Ooh, that's gonna be a really hard one because Blacklist International yes. is very determined. We love getting Ooh. your comments on TikTok, so keep them coming. Be sure to use the hashtag Mobile Legends Bang Bang, Bang MLBBM4, and Dare, Dare to, to be, be Great. Langsung aja kirim postingan kalian tentunya untuk ngedukung tim-tim yang akan beradu di Grand Final tentunya di TikTok. Now we're gonna dissect the performance of Echo and Blacklist International during this entire M4. So analyst, break it down for us. The world watches here today, incomprehensible of what might be a potential defending champion. Us here at the analyst dance once more. This is LaFell. This is the most wanted man here and across the world. It's Wolf, Miracle, and myself, Gideon Q. We're gonna talk a little bit about between the matchups between Blacklist International and as well as Echo. But honestly, guys, I think there has been a lot of talks, and based on what we've seen, thanks to Mara and Clara. I'm thinking that maybe, I don't know, Echo seems to be the favorite for a lot of teams. But do people really understand how much of a challenge that is going to be, LaFell? Okay, so here's the thing. They already went for the best of five, and in that one, Blacklist did win. But the thing is, looking at how Echo plays, they're very explosive. They have a lot of drive. Once they get a small victory, they will snowball out of control. So I feel like it's going to be a very tight match because Echo is very explosive, but with explosions, Blacklist can see it happening and they could like weather it down and then get a comeback. Well, I mean, comeback or not, a best of seven is a different challenge here. And we got to obviously ask the smartest man at the desk, as proclaimed, the best of seven. How does this really shake things up between Blacklist and as well as Echo? And We've seen before, Blacklist has stated that they don't usually lose twice to a team, but in a best of seven, who's more favored in this particular situation? I think that it's just natural to, to vote for Blacklist International, right? Because they had a lot of experience. They have been here before in the Grand Assault stages. But th then again, I think it's going to be a question of who is better when it comes to like uh, the handling their fatigue. Because we saw in the best of five series, right, between these two teams, there were so many, uh, there's so many ideas and strategies that kind of got exhausted by both teams between each other. So I will say that uh, when it comes to just to answering your question of who is favored here, I think Blacklist because of their experience, but Echo, if they really showed something different from a best of five, I think that Blacklist will be stunned from that. Well, we'll see how that's going to be. Soon we're going to be throwing off some graphics and we're really going to start breaking it down. But Miracle, my brother, unfortunately, our nations have been cut down a little short here. It's a little sad, of course, but, you know, walk me through this because now the performance summary overall, how important is this overall first pick rate? You know, blue side used to be dominant side during the group stages, but things have changed and the, the meta technically has evolved. Well, you know, obviously looking at it right now, for the first pick, it's kind of weird, right? Because for first pick, Echo has a very, very good win rate. They love picking up their prio hero. Sometimes it's the Kaja, it's the Yi, but mostly it's the carry on Benny, right? So the first pick has been very, very good for Echo. Not so much for Blacklist, but it's a fun fact that right now, in the M4 meta, we all think that, hey, first pick is gonna be better. No, not for Blacklist, because they actually enjoy being the second pick. 72.7% win rate on second pick, which is pretty crazy, but it really makes sense when you understand their heroes. They really like to counter the opponents based on what they prioritize first, and Blacklist, especially up against Echo, they kind of have their number. I mean, if we're talking about numbers here, Wolf, I mean, when we're looking at that, and especially when it comes down to that second part of second, uh, second picks, generally it's just overall higher. And it's not even like below 50% for either one of these teams. 72%, right? I think that it is um, the Blacklist special, the Bon Chan special, to kind of go for the trade, the first two picks, then eventually go for a curveball in the last pick. That's how he is able to outplay his teams. But looking now at the KDA, okay, so almost the same, but Benny Kitty, that's seven average KDA is actually pretty high. Okay, so here's the thing looking at KDA, it's either two things. Number one, you don't die as much, or number two, you just get a lot of kills. And that's why we gotta talk about the numbers because according to the average KDA, numbers have proven that Echo, they're more explosive. Because even talking to Bonchan, it's like, it's all about the objectives. But for Echo, it's the same. But their objectives are kills. 
I mean, this could honestly skew the data here. And that's something that I really want to talk about because overall, we're talking about GPM high score. We're looking at Oheb here, and we, I honestly was hoping to see him in the KDA side, but no, he's only in that GPM. So teams, and especially for Blacklist International, are winning games with Oheb just hard farming, but not getting as many kills as we would like to you know, imagine you know, from the performance of M3. Honestly, looking at it, if you see how Blacklist International plays compared to Echo, I think LaFell kind of touched on it already. Echo is very explosive, but Blacklist International, they're consistent, right? They don't need a lot of kills. Sometimes they even die for it, but hey, they deal a lot of damage, and the damage is enough for them to get the dub in the game. For Echo, it's a lot... A lot relies on actually their mid lane and their gold lane, sometimes even their XP lane. Carl TZ has taken more of a utility role this time, as you can see from the performance summary here with the top hero picks. The top hero picks for Echo, it's gonna be the Fredrin. So, Carl TZ in this tournament, he's evolved, he's matured as a player from the player we saw at M2, the assassin, the hyper carry Carl TZ. He's still here. But he knows that right now it's time to enable these younger players, the players like Sanji, Sanford, to perform on the stage. Funny enough, LaFell, you and me, we have no stake in this, unfortunately. You know, we're not part of that top region, so we can actually have an objective look at the overall performance of both of these teams. And so far, and especially with Echo, we're seeing, you know, Cartesi's performance. Yeah, he's great. The next generation of Filipino, of a potential Filipino dynasty here being built upon his shoulders. Is this going to be a problem, or is Blacklist going to defend? Honestly, I'm on the side of Echo. I kind of feel like they will build their own dynasty. As long as they understand, they got to watch out for the draft. Because so far, we're looking at performance summary. But something we got to take note of, most of Blacklist International wins is when the opponent uses assassins. Because we, we looked at the Fredrin pick just now. I kind of feel like for both teams, they want to prioritize on like the tankier junglers. Because the thing about using an assassin against Blacklist International, Blacklist will go into your jungle and deny you of the purple buff. That is huge. I'm glad to have you on the stand here. You, Wolf, not so much. But with that being said, <laughs> hopefully you guys are going to have a great show here. I'm very curious what's going on with Mara and as well as Clara. What are they up to? Let's find out. Thank you, analysts. We're excited and looking forward to who will be the grand champion of the Mobile Legends Bang Bang M4 World Championship. Kami benar-benar menantikan siapakah yang akan menjadi juara dari M4 World Championship. Now we're gonna take this time and devote this to show appreciation to the fans who became part of our journey here in M4. Dan kami benar-benar mengucapkan terima kasih kepada para fans yang sudah mendukung acara ini dan terus bersuara untuk menyemarakan acara M4 World Championship. who have supported and dedicated their time for their favorite teams. And for us here, the MLBB community have rewarded them by bringing them here to M4 to support their favorite teams live. First, we have our Singaporean cosplayer, Nana Kimmy, cosplaying as Nana. Hi! 
Hello. How is your experience so far? How is the experience so far, Nana? This is my first year experience a live stage. My first time is last year in Singapore. I have witnessed Blacklist as the champions of yes. M3. This time, I'm really excited to witness a championship again. Wow, cute Nana Hien. Dia benar-benar excited untuk menyaksikan kali ini adalah kali pertama dia menonton. And thank you for coming, Nana. Please don't make me a cat, okay? But we have another fans, a lucky friend from Malaysia, at Enan. What do you think about the teams that is playing in M4? All of the teams. Um, from my perspective, every team is improving, especially Philippines team. It's been three seasons already since they are getting the world champion, starting from brand. Second season, uh, second is Blacklist, and this season it's either Echo or Blacklist. We we really excited to see who will going to be the champion. Wow, banyak banget yang terus berkembang dari setiap timnya, dan apalagi kali ini lagi dan lagi Filipina, dan mereka benar-benar penasaran siapa yang akan menjadi juaranya. But next, we have lucky friend from Indonesia. They're from Munton Care. Halo Bapak Wahyu. Halo. Gimana nih kalau melihat dari semuanya, kita menjadi tuan rumah, ada gak sih pesan-pesan yang pengen kamu sampaikan untuk semua yang menyaksikan? Ada dong, bagi fans Indonesia mari kita ramaikan Grand Final M4 Kita tunjukkan bahwa kita itu tidak toxic dan selalu hype untuk event MLBB ke depannya Oke, okay, let's don't be toxic and let's just be great Thank you, Wahyu Now Pinas Lang Malakas, lucky fan, Reese and Boost Geo When you found out that it's going to be Philippines versus Philippines in the Grand Finals Tell us what your reactions were Reese. So, sobrang saya, Timara. Nah, sobrang? Gano ka saya? 100%. 100%? Uh, sobrang saya po na kasi yung Philippines. At lalo na yung Blacklist nakapasok sa Grand Finals. And yun po, sobrang... Ewan ko, kahit ngayon di ako po makapaniwala na Blacklist nakapasok sa Grand Finals. And this is my first travel in inter international. Kaya sobrang memorable po. He's really happy that once again Blacklist has made it to the Grand Finals. He's been supporting Blacklist for the longest time. Sometimes he would travel 10 hours to watch them. Even early for 15 hours, 3 in the morning. And look at what he made. Show it off. So he can't oh. believe that he's here to be able to watch live. What about you, Boost Geo? For me, I'm very grateful from the start. I know both Philippines, uh, both Philippines is like Blacklist International and Echo is is very strong and I'm grateful that this is a once in a life experience that being because we won in this contest then of course uh, thank you Muntu for having us and uh, yeah I'm very grateful for having you and we're very grateful to you. Oh, he's shaking. He's so cute. Oh, wow, lucky fans. Mereka benar-benar bersyukur berada di sini untuk menyaksikan acara yang luar biasa dan tim-tim yang begitu hebat. And now we have our lucky fan, Manjin. Oh, Manjin, oh. What? Why do you think Philippines is so great? Why do you think they're so good? Because again, M2, Bren, M3, Blacklist. And now regardless what happens, Philippines is a winner. I think the best trait that I can describe for us Filipinos is that we're really persistent and very well disciplined, especially for the things we love. We're very passionate for our dream and we love challenges. So to the Filipino gamers who's watching out there, I know by now they're inspired to be someday be champions as well. If you can predict, prediction, who's gonna win, what's gonna happen? Hmm. I think the winner will be a Filipino. A Filipino. And the loser, the losing country will be Philippines. Okay, you That's know what? Right. We're so grateful to have all of you here. And it's not just Indonesia that people are celebrating. We have fans all across the globe. So how about let's say hi to some of them right now from Singapore. We're Singapore. Hello. Hi. I am here all the way in Singapore, but I am not alone here. I'm here together with everyone. And of course, we are all here to bear witness this one region battling against themselves, PH versus PH. 
Paris International, they are ready to take the crown for themselves again. However, of course, Echo is one hell of a challenger and we are all here super stoked and really want to find out if whether Echo will be able to be victorious this time. If whether Blacklist International will be able to defend their throne. Back to you Thank guys. Thank you, Singapore! Wow. You know, Clara, I heard from Jay, a caster from Singapore, that they really watch MPL Philippines. We have a lot of fans there. How about, let's take a look at Malaysia. Hello Hi. from Malaysia. Hello. I'm Sid and now we are having our watch party here at Homeboy Speed Stop. And after this, it's a grand final between two teams from Philippines. Who's going to be the best team? It's either Echo or Blacklist International. Please give them the full support for the all Philippine teams who are competing in the grand finals. May the best Philippine teams win this battle. Now, back to you, Mara and Clara. Thank you, Thank you Sid. Thank you, Malaysia. And finally, Philippines. Yeah. Hello, Jakarta. From the Philippines. Market Market with a horde of Filipino fans who have been watching M4 from here or from home since very long. Proud repeat of our MPL Beach World Tank Finals. And now back again to the world stage, the whole Philippines is cheering you on. Echo and Blacklist International. Let's have an excellent series. Everyone here just wants to watch exciting MOBB. And so you can feel the energy here. Audience, let's show Jakarta our pride. And I say Blacklist, Black the crowd. Echo Loud, Echo Proud. And all together, Pinas Lang, Good luck over there, everyone. Again, this is your very own Odin. Back to you, Mara and Cole. showing even with the energy pinas lang malakas now we're gonna break it down for echo and blacklist international analyst into the details we go before this best of seven bout begins let's talk about what these teams might bring into their lineups m4 has had the metagame evolve one way make a swerve and then go another direction and here we're going to try to break it down between blackness international and echo we have here lafell wolf leo and mirko to do just that wolf you've been watching these teams since forever <laughs> Yeah. What can we expect going into this best of seven? Uh, I guess you, uh, you would expect Ube, right? <laughs> that is, for Blacklist International, we saw that from um, Echo themselves when they battled in the upper bracket finals. Now, then again, we saw that Echo, it kind of felt like they're not that masterful yet with that composition. They look really good, though. I'm not saying that they look bad back then, but it's just like, when it comes to experience, Blacklist knows that. So, what I expect from Echo this time is a different shade of, uh, of purple coming out from them when they're going up against Blacklist in the finals. Okay, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. You said that Blacklist International have a lot of experience and Echo, the thing that I've learned for newer teams is that they learn faster. Sure, the more veteran teams, they learn more efficient, but in the best of seven, I kind of feel like for the newer players, whatever mistakes they do, it was stuck with them for the entire best of seven series. So in this series, I kind of feel like I understand what you're saying, yeah. but if we're talking about learning, Echo might have the edge. They might learn a little bit faster. Well, in terms of drafts, honestly, it does feel like Blacklist International have had the more solid drafts around or across M4. Meanwhile, Echo, I think me and you, Leo, we had a lot of discussions about this where the drafts from Echo seemed kind of shaky sometimes, right? We saw the Eastern Shin, we saw even yesterday picking up a Cho, and then the Hilda later on swapping Yaoi into that Hilda. But first, I think we're going to take a look at the statistics first. If anything is to be said about Blacks International, they are so consistent. And one of the most consistent players I've ever seen in the entire history of pro MOBB play is Haji, as LaFell would call the Kada machine. And the thing is, it's nice when Blacklist International, they're in a pinch. They look at Haji, they look at Edward. Everyone performed well, but for these two players, they're gonna have more on their shoulders. And looking at the win rate as well, E, like, okay, Farsa, he played more, it's a lot of bursts, but if, give, if Eve is given to Haji, 
this 100% win rate might stay. Yeah, worthy, I worthy of the trade, right? Definitely. I think that we'll be seeking for Blacklist International, both Farsa as well as the Eve, and uh, the way that they are controlling the map because of it and the team fights. Haji just plays the Eve as well as the Farsa so differently from other teams. Maybe the only like uh, similar place that was from when Rosa plays it, the aggressive kind of Nook Mages. We are going to ex uh, experience once again how great Haji is, this kind of heroes. My, one of my personal like MVPs of the past championship of Blacklist International is definitely Haji. And I think that his improvement from the previous season was uh, still very consistent. Yep, he's your favorite player. He is. He is my favorite player on Blacklist, right? I mean, the way he plays these mages, these are safe mages. These aren't mages that's yeah. that are supposed to be in front, right? I think uh, back at M3, I was very surprised of uh, hate, Hatred's performance, right, on Onyx PH. The way he was able to just play in the middle of the team fight. But for Haji, sometimes he's the frontliner. He's the frontliner, he builds Winter Truncheon early. I think in terms of itemization, positioning as well, this is your guy, right? And I'm not just talking about positioning, playing in the back line, no. Playing in the front line by understanding the spacing of the hero so well, to a point where he can be the front line, but he's always still safe. And that just shows how important the box is in the current metagame of M4. And that's supported by Oh My Venus, who a lot would agree with me when I say is the heart and soul of the Ube. Okay, the thing about Oh My Venus is a different kind of power in Blacklist International because Oh My Venus is moving the chess pieces and using a healer like an Estes, you can dictate how we want to fight back because the way that Blacklist International is playing, if you want to engage, if you want to fight, you're going to be the one that's, that starts something. We're going to retaliate and that's why it's great with having Oh My Venus in Blacklist because he knows when to re-engage. Fun fact, do you know how Ube is actually made? Like the actual ube, the food, like purple oh, yam. Yeah. It's a root crop, right? You boil it, high temperature for a long time, you mash it. Like there's a lot of pressure in it. And that's exactly how Oh My Venus, as well as Blacklist International, have developed this strategy. Over time, so much pressure, so much refinement, eventually you get a wonderful recipe, wonderful dish that you can see in the world stage back to back. And that's what tells the story of the ube. Again, you can throw in the best amount of bursts. You can throw in the best in the world trying to cut into your back lines, They'll even to the front lines via Carl Teasy's Fredrin, his Akai, his Grok. I can't believe we're here, 2023, M4. These are the picks for yeah. this guy? These are the picks for the exactly. FMVP of M2? It's insane, right? How much he's matured, how much he's learned and progressed through the years here. Coming again into the Grand Finals of his second, well, second Grand Finals in a World Championship. It's not like he can't play the Assassins anymore. He can still play those Assassins. He can still threaten the back line with the Fanny, the Ling, and I'm still waiting for it, but the Lancelot, right? I mean, it's still possible, but honestly, look at this tournament, the meta as well. It just really favors these fighters in the jungle. Not just the fighters, but also just the tanks, the utility provides so much for the team, enables the mid lane and the gold lane to do what Echo's been doing. Sanford as well, XP mid gold. And even to a point, it's Yaoi too. These are all carries. That's why Echo is so dangerous. They can carry through every single role. I guess we know who he's voting for. <laughs> okay, so right now we're looking at Benny Cutie as well, where he has, if I'm not mistaken, still the highest KDA. And yep. very weird thing, yep. Benny Cutie, it looks like the entire map is open to him because even if Yaoi catches someone, sometimes he doesn't engage. He's waiting for the rest of the enemy team to show their face, then he re-engage. So he's playing a very different way than every other goal later where usually when the foot is in front of his face, he'll eat it. No, Benny Cutie, he assess first and makes the judgment call a little bit later. Which is the entire essence of this hero, his yeah. power hero, carry. Because the kit just so solves everything that Benny Cody wants, right? If he wants to split push, he can go ahead and click that ult. If yeah. he wants to space the opponents out, throws out the pinwheel. If he needs to yeah. re uh, locate himself, he's got yeah. the dash. And what I can say about Benny Cutie is that if they, you have a trophy for a, a gold standard, a gold lane standard, he now holds it for sure. He knows how to position well, he knows how to time his ultimates, he knows when to fight whenever, he's, uh, uh, whenever his power spike is not yet there. So I think he is the holder of the gold standard today. Yep, everybody watch out for Bagyong Benny. For now, let's go ahead and throw it back to our lovely hosts. I'm pretty sure they'll have something very interesting for y'all before the match begins.
arrived in the players' holding area. And let's take a look at them now. They're interacting with each other. We're gonna pull one of them. JP, hi JP. Why did you happen? Can talk to you. So what's going on right now? What are you guys doing? Alang, pangapampakalma lang para before laban. So they're just trying to calm themselves, playing with each other. Who's the most nervous out of everybody? So now, I'm sure, pure excited lang na alam de ba kasi sanay na sanay na sa stage. So they've gotten used to the stage. It's all excitement that they're feeling. Who could not sleep last night? In San San do, kasi. Ayaw nga nila magtabi sa kama, kaya ano. Ayaw magtabi, kaya hindi makatulog eh. <laughs> the San San duo could not sleep last night. That's Sanford and Sanji. They couldn't sleep beside each other. They couldn't sleep beside each other. So they couldn't sleep properly without being with each other. So they're like twins, inseparable. Yeah. <laughs> so out of everybody, you have the most experience in the world stage. And Carl TZ, you've been to the M series before. The four of them, first timers. What's something, an advice that you gave them to make sure that the nerves don't get in the head and they can perform their best today? Uh, I always say, even if they don't have a fight, they don't have to be overhyped. He's telling them that they can handle the team and they just need to be they can handle the team they just need to be confident and they can do their thing. All right, I know that you got some stuff to do, so good luck. You got this. Echo loud? Echo proud. Now it's time to talk to Blacklist International. We're gonna put somebody here that's available. Oh, have come over here. Okay. Oh, don't, don't trip. We still have a game. What's the first thing you ate today? Cold beef. Are you nervous? Yes or no? No. And who do you think is gonna be the finals MVP? Me. <laughs> Who's the best Beatrix Caesar? Me. Wow, confident. Okay, I wanna know. How's the feeling this time around compared to M3? I think it's the same. The same. And what is the same feeling? What is that feeling? Excited to get on stage and win. If you were keeping an eye out on one specific player from the other side, who is that? Yaoi. Why? Because their gameplay revolves on Yaoi. What's your message to Yaoi? Good luck. May the best team win. May the best team win. Let's get it on. And the teams are preparing for their battle. Best of seven for the grand final. But how about the opinion from the talents? But before we heard from them, let me invite our queen, Mara. Hi. Hello, Claire. Mara. Do you I... want to hear from our talents here? I had to run all the way yes. from the players' room. Oh, now, yeah. you know, this is going to be a really exciting match. So we got our talents. We got a little bit of a debate mm. going on right here. So on our right, who do we have? Blacklist! Wow. Oh, okay. Blacklist. Assassin Dave. Yeah, Blacklist for the win. Okay. For Blacklist, representing Blacklist International, there's Jay's Assassin Dave, Professor KB, and Wolf. Wolf. I okay. think Wolf is on the wrong side. Oh, really? We need to push Wolf on the other side. This curse <laughs> is too strong. Oh, the curse is the curse. Oh, oh. The, the Wolf curse. Okay, right over here for the for side Eco. of Echo. There's Gideon, Mirko, LaFell, and Leo. Wow. Echo Loud! Echo, Echo Brown! All right, okay, we gotta settle this right now, Clara. We gotta know why Blacklist deserves to win and why Echo deserves to win. Let's do. Oh, Jay. Clara, yes. you know, let, let, let's do rock, paper, scissors. Whoever wins, that side goes first. Okay, one, rock, two. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, okay, right. I won. Echo, Echo, verse. Echo will go first. All right, here we go now. Here we go, Orcus. What you got? Boys, 
This is a simple one. Echo is by far one of the greatest. And how do we know they've got the youngest players? They have an M2 World Championship jungler to lead them. The next generation of Filipino mobile legends is here. Tell them, Leo. Wow. That's right, that's right. Best in the world. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Wait, that's not what orcas say, right? <laughs> what, what, Loud what and do, proud, bro. What, do, oh. what noise does the orcas make? What do they make? Blue, blue. Blue, blue. <laughs> is that, is, is that, is that how orcas sound? Is that how, no, orcas like, like. Oh, probably, I, mean, I, I don't know. Nah, I don't, they I, I they do bloop, bloop, and they bloop, glur. Bloop. All right, James, what you got to say? To be honest, you have won MVP. We have the whole team that won M3, and they're going to do it again. No, yeah. That, we have the best duo in the world. Right, guys? Oh, yeah. V Blacklist. We got a V Wise on the Blacklist International, right? That's so right. The best duo on the world. Oh, OK. Wow, go. strong statement. They got the best duo. What you got? Hey, man, you got a duo. You got a duo. You got Oheb, sure. You can carry usually through Oheb, Haji. But we, we can carry through Sanji, Sanford, Yaoi, Benny. And guess what? Kothizi, best in the world. Best Whoa, in the world. Best best five of them. OK. All right. Yo, we have James. super AI, OK? Assassin Blacklist is all about the play style. It's all about the discipline. It's all about everything that Echo does not have. All right? The discipline. Listen. Wow. Yeah. Okay, Assassin Lafayette Dance wants to say something. Blacklist you. has everything. Come on. We got Freewise. We got Oheb. We got Haji, the KDA machine, right? Yes. We got a number. Oh, Ooh, maybe. They got the numbers. Because the Blacklist is number one. Oh, they got the numbers. Number one. Lafel. Lafel, what you got to say to that? Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm here because I'm upset. Oh, why are you upset? upset? Oh, oh why? Blacklist. Why? Because I wanted to buy their jacket and it sold out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you went there. Wait, bro. I got the last jacket. I got upset, the last one. Our loyalty can be bought. So if like, you, you know, you guys could hook us up, then, you know, we could trade places. Hey, hey. Is that right? Hey, That's right. That's right. That's hey, right. LaFell. Loyalty hey, can LaFell. be bought. What the reason? Hey, LaFell, how okay. about a jacket and a jersey and track pants and some shorts? Some birds from Blacklist. Will you come over here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's yeah, do, do it. Yeah, do we have a jacket for them? Where, where's the load yet? No, you move it. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So we, are we giving them a jacket? Whoa. 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 Have you seen their varsities, bro? Uh oh. Lovell? Lovell? You want to change What's your heart? Okay. Since we're on the side of Echo, no. Echo <laughs> no. Loud. Echo Proud. Uh, oh, we thought rejected. we could buy him over. <laughs> We okay. thought we could buy him over. Yeah, but we know, you know, we don't have to buy him over though, because we know that yeah. Blacklist International, they're the trendsetters. They set the meta, and everybody just follows. And if you're looking at the past the matches that we saw from Blacklist Interna from Blacklist International and Echo, and even other teams, like they're just really following Blacklist International. They haven't broken the code. Oh. Oh. Okay, oh. Leo, how are we gonna break the code? It's very simple, isn't it, Leo? Oh, they're discussing right now. Oh, discussing. Come on, we're come discussing. on. Discussing. You guys just hold on. You guys just hold on. Okay, we we need we need we need Leo to hype up a little bit. Oh, this is have? just gonna be short, <gasps> short and sweet. Just like this best of seven. Yeah, we. You ready for this, Leo? All right. Yep. Echo is gonna need the help of Limang Echo fans all around the world. Limang Echo fans, so that they can eventually become best in the world. Best, best in the world. world. Okay. All right, Clara. Clara. We gotta sell the list with a cheer battle. All yeah. right? Yeah, okay, man. okay, okay. Let, let's hear it from that time. I'm gonna start, ladies and gentlemen. I say blacklist, you say break the call! Blacklist! Break the call! Blacklist! Break the call! Blacklist! Break the call! Break the call. Whoa, for blacklist! Okay, Jace, you gotta save that voice for later. Oh, That's no seven. Let, let's hear it from the Orcas! Come on, we can do better, boys. We can, we can do, do better. Okay, okay. Echo loud, echo proud. Everyone ready? Echo loud! Echo proud! Echo loud! Echo proud! Echo loud! Echo proud! There you go. That's amazing. Woo. Okay, this, this debate is getting me Bo. really excited for what's coming up, Clara. But you know, we also have exciting news for what's happening with Mobile Legends Bang Bang oh. this 2023. Let's watch this. 
2022 was a fruitful year for Mobile Legends Bang Bang Esports. Now, let's take a quick look at what more can you expect this year. After kickstarting the year with M4, we have the second MLBB Women's Invitational, or MWI, 2023 in February. The MPL season and official tournaments will commence from February to May, including NACT and a new tournament in Turkey. Next, we have the SEA Games 2023 in Cambodia and MSC 2023 happening back to back. In July, we also have the first ever Snapdragon Pro Series MLBB Challenge organized by ESL, as well as the World Cyber Games, or WCG 2023. As the second half of the year starts, so does the second half of the MPL and official tournaments. Leading up to MPL Invitational in November, Finally, we will end the year, of course, with M5 in the Philippines. 2023 is going to be a big year for the MLBB esports ecosystem. None of this would be possible without our amazing fans and incredible community. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. World Championship will be held in the strongest land of all with the strongest players Philippines Pinaslang Malakas Now wow. before we proceed we'd like to call on stage the president of the Philippine Olympic Committee Mr. Abraham Bambol Tolentino Please join us Hi. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jakarta. Thank you very much, Moonton, for this 2022 M4 Mobile Legend Bang Bang Championship. We're so excited. Who will be the winner? Echo or Blacklist? But definitely, it will be from the Philippines. Thank you very much. And. We're more excited that the next M5 will be in the Philippines. We'll be excited to give you the best hospitality of the Filipino. So see you guys, M5 in Philippines. Thank you very much, Jakarta. Thank you very much, Munto. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. You. Tolentino, the president of the Philippine Olympic Committee. This is going to be very exciting. And regardless what happens today, Philippines will come out as the winner. It's now time to find out who is the strongest amongst all the regions, the best team, the fiercest. Let us now start the Mobile Legends Bang Bang M4 World Championship. Dare to be great! The reigning champions, the relentless agents from the Philippines, march through the M4 World Championships with sheer dominance taking down opposing foes one at a time and claimed a spot in the grand finals. Right now, looking in the room, looking inside the scene. Echo, a fierce challenger with a burning desire to claim victory and make history. The Orcas have swam their way through adversity and proved to be a worthy contender. 
Behind the leadership of Carl Teasy, the M2 Finals MVP, Echo is ready to stand loud and proud onto the stage. sa makakalaban namin bukas sa akin ko. Sobrang gusto ko manalo bukas para sa akin at para sa kakampi ko. Gagawin po namin ang lahat para sa trophy na to dahil ito po yung matagal namin na nangangatang simula pa. At hindi na po kami kitigil kasi one series away na lang po kami sa akin. Are you ready for the grand finals of M4?
dynasty, legacy, destiny. They dare to be the greatest, a showcase of Filipino excellence. Welcome in Mabuhay, at your service. My name is Leo, here with Mirko and LaFell, and we'll be bringing you the grand finals of the M4 World Championships. Gentlemen, it's an honor to share the desk with you tonight. Man, feeling great as usual. I am honored to be here with you as well. Leo, LaFell, this is the grand finals. You know, coming up to this, leading up to this, there was a lot of doubts as to who would be here. But the Philippines are still here as the top region, Echo versus Blacklist. Whatever happens today, I'm happy to be a part of history because either the defending champions will get back-to-back -back champions or the first ever defending champions will go down and have to let the new blood come in as the new champions. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight would not be possible without our sponsors. M4 is powered by Moonton, presented by TikTok, the official content partner, supported by Secret Lab, the official gaming chair, and Esports Charts, our analytical partner. Gank, our official merchandise partner. MeWatch, our media partner. And last but not least, the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy of the Republic of Indonesia. The M4 Pass available now. Complete all active tasks and you will reach level 75 with ease and for free. Log in now and get exclusive rewards such as the Beatrix Light Chaser and Stellar Brilliant Skins and of course the M4 Beatrix Skin. They're all waiting for you in the past. Use the hashtags Mobile Legends Bang Bang, hashtag MLBBM4 and hashtag Dare to be Great. And that's exactly what these two teams here came to do. They flew out from Manila. They flew out hot after their grand finals performance in MPL Philippines Season 10 and here we're seeing the rivalry of a century. They didn't just dare to be great. They are great. They've proven in this tournament how much and how much progress they've made throughout this tournament so far. We could see that again, Blacklist International and Echo, they have very distinctive styles that make the team work. So far, Echo Philippines have not been able to break the code. But here in the Grand Finals, it's a different stage. It's the world stage and it's the highest level of MLBB in the world. Best of seven is set to test the best of the best because within the best of three is very tiring. Best of five, even more tiring. Best of seven, it doesn't just test your physical strength. It tests your mental strength and it tests your strength as a team, the strength of the coaching staff. This is where your limits are tested. And all in effort to take home the grandest prize of them all, the M4 World Championship Trophy. It's kind of revamped since we last saw it, since Blacklist International took home the M3 title. And here, from Echo, the House of Highlights, the Orcas, they're going ahead and sending new blood into this competition, this rivalry. It's Sanji, a rookie from Season 10, making his way into the runner-up, into the grand finals of Season 10, and now on the world stage. Can you imagine what it must be like? It's crazy, right? Both of these players, they have a very, very interesting style. Because usually as a mage, you want to be in the back line. You want to provide damage, but you want to stay safe. These two, they don't know what safe is. Safe is everywhere, right? For them, it's in the front lines. Even in the middle of the team fight, they can create these spaces for them to deal them as much damage as possible, but also take none yeah. damage back. None of the damage back. Here's the thing. I would say... They dare to be great because wow. they have the skills to outplay. And that's the thing. It's not that no one chases after them. It's not necessarily no. their, their positioning is the safest in the world. Everyone's after them. They Everyone. put themselves in danger. And they have faced danger. And within the face of danger, they use their spells. They use like the winter truncheons. They use the immortality to make sure that not only do they stay alive, they get the kills, they get the objectives. The highest level of MLBB, there's a very small margin in terms of skill for both of the teams. And these two teams risk everything to get that small advantage to be able to get the dub. And here, we're going to see exactly what are the keys to victory, starting with Blacklist International. Blacklist International, they got to continue to evolve the Ube, but I don't think that is, like, enough. They got to make sure that... They gotta help Oheb to snipe through the Benny Cutie Hurricane. And I feel like that is definitely one of their key to victories where Oheb is gonna be quite tested because the Ube strat we've seen during the best of five 
can actually be crumbled. And in that kind of situation, Oheb, he's gonna be like the main target. I like the dichotomy between their gold laners, Oheb and Benny Cutie. They're both amazing and the greatest at what they do, but they're also very different kinds of gold laners. Benny Cutie was born and bred to be a split pusher. And when it comes to team fights, he is so good at finding the right target. When it comes to Oheb, it seems like the Filipino sniper was just created and cultivated to be able to carry, but he needs the right setup. Echo, talk us through, LaFell, what exactly the Orcas need to do to take on their first world championship. I would say use your own strength at Yaoi, as well as the San San duo, because Yaoi, when he is able to use a cash type hero, he's the one that dictates how the fight goes. Because going up against a black against Blacklist International, you want to initiate the fight. You don't want Blacklist International to put you in, in, in a dangerous spot. And with that being said, the San San duo, Sanford, as well as Sanji, Honestly, just give them the heroes that they can thrive. Give them heroes that can outplay their, their laners and they can win the game for you. Give them a winning lane, a good matchup, right? So that they can scale and actually create a snowball for themselves. Now, again, we need to talk about this duo and not, not just the duo, just the entire Echo here. They're dynamic. I touched on this a little bit earlier, but they can actually carry from every single role. I'm talking literally every. Not just the gold lane, not even just the XP lane, but even in the roam position. Yep. Yaoi, he styles. You saw in the keys to victory that he needs to change. He needs to evolve from a playmaker to a kingmaker. And they're about to do that here tonight in the faces of the kings and queens of the world from M3. Ladies and gentlemen, the stakes have never been higher. These two teams have practiced their minds off, as a good friend of ours would say. <laughs> and the fruits of their labor are about to come through here tonight. I can only imagine what's going on through their minds because they're all going through their own struggles, right? Benny Cutie here has just been through the ups and downs in his years in the MPL. V and Ys have tried to shut down the haters, prove them wrong in their multiple grand finals appearances. And that all comes through here tonight. It all comes to a head and we're about to do just that as game one begins. The drafting phase is upon us. Decisions are going to be made oh. here, and we're only hoping for the best. We only want to see Echo and Blacklist pick up their most favorite heroes, their most powerful picks here. LaFell, what are we looking out for? Okay, first things first, I'm looking out for the Fredrin, and the Fredrin has been banned because for both teams, Wise as well as Carl TZ are really good on this Fredrin pick. Now, look at Blacklist International. Let's pay attention to the bans because they ban out the Cho as well as the Kaja. Both are pick style heroes. Looking at Echo, they're making sure that Benny Cutie will have a better time in his goal lane. So with, with the 1-1 one, one gone, with the carry gone, I would say Beatrix increases in value. I think the Yeeve increases in value as well, with the Kaja band away, with a lot of bands wow. here. You would really think that the Yeeve would become the number one in Pryo, but Blacklist, they opt to go for the Barats, leaving the Yeeve open, and the Lapu Lapu that we mentioned earlier. You give Sanford this pick, and he carries. So here's the gamble that Coach Tick and Treb have picked up on. You leave open the Eve, we're gonna pick it up, put a hero that Sanford loves, and what's the answer? What's the swing back? Do they go Benedetta? Do they go Yu Jong? Do they go Farsa? Because that seems to be the answer. And Interesting. They're wow. going for the Oheb Harith priority. We've seen this from Echo before. I like what you said, priority, because that's how you see where their mindset is at. Because we got to talk about the Barats first pick, because that has to be your priority. And your priority pick dictates how you're going to move around the map. So in this game, they're putting a lot of weight onto Wise's shoulder to actually move the entire team forward. Now that they've seen the Lap Lapu as well as the Eve, they understand that they want to set up a bot. So we got to move around the box a lot. Haji, signature pick on the Farsa. And the Harib, it's kind of like setting up. It's like, I don't care what kind of marksman you're going to pick. I'm going to be able to survive my lane and actually impact the game at, I would say, the mid stages of the game. Now, though, you can already see the respect being given over, right? Blacklist International, this is the draft that they've went for. A lot of magic damage. Without the S picked up in the early phase here for Blacklist International, Echo will take that away. Secondly, though, you can expect Edward, to actually get counter or, or just targeted here. 
maybe the Benedetta ban comes through because Blacklist still need a physical damage threat. But they still are going to try to nail down Venus's hero here. The Estes, now the Diggy. Okay, so looking at Echo, they really want to make sure that when they dive, it is successful. But before that, we got a quote from Oh My Venus saying, we're kind of expecting that teams will ban the Estes and we're actually prepared for it. I'm looking forward to see Estes in the banning section. Hey, and now it has been banned. And what better place to show your maximum potential in the grand finals of the world your stage? With the Lolita being picked up here by Echo, they're leaving Benicuri in both a dangerous and also protected spot. Because again, he, they want to make sure that he isn't fully countered. But also, you got to wonder what else is out left there. Because the Beatrix is out, the Brody is out. Matilda. Uh, they themselves <laughs> panned out the um, carry and the uh, one one. Are you seeing a carry here? Oh, rather, a Matilda? Yeah, I'm thinking, there the, it I'm is. thinking Matilda and Blacklist International lock it up. The Benedetta 2 earlier on. They need a physical damage threat. And guess what? The Barats actually work super well with the Matilda, oh. and that's the reason Echo banned out all these marksmen. They wanted to go for the Lunox, they wanted to go for some burst damage and some more magic damage, knowing that Sanford on the Lapu likes to go for just a lot of damage. Remember, yesterday we saw the Hunter Strike, the Bloodlust Axe. This is a very physical Lapu. I would say, with the draft coming in from Blacklist International, this is a very good draft to start game number one because it is a very simple draft. This is what this is what is going to give you confidence moving to game two onwards. So honestly, I'm liking the draft coming in from Blacklist because you can make very little mistakes with this kind of draft, with this kind of gameplay. Yep, signature picks for all of our defending champions. For Echo, I'd like to say the only thing that's missing for me is the split push potential from Benny Cutie. It's not as potent when you're on a hero like Lunox, but what it does have is amazing team fight engagement, a lot of damage when you hit your power spike. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Indoor Sinayan and all across the world, I hope you're ready. It's time for game one in this best of seven between Blacklist International and Echo. Looking at both drafts, I would assume that they're not gonna fight a lot in the early stages of the game. They're gonna fight around Riverside. They're gonna fight for the control around the turtle because they wanna make sure that they have the levels first. So if you see any kind of rotation, it's all about maximizing the minions to make sure you get as much level force on your heroes before going into the turtle phase. With two utility junglers, this is what you can expect, right? A lot of emphasis around the mid control. Why? To control the neutral objectives like you mentioned earlier. The control plays such a huge impact in this game and you can already see for both of the teams, Venus and Haji, Sanji and Yaoi, they're focusing a lot, putting a lot of resources down into that mid lane to create some more pressure, but still, it's Blacklist International who secure the Lethal Wanderer. Okay, so now, looking at Blacklist as well as Echo, not a lot of action will come true. I'm, I'm thinking they gotta find a way for Echo to get Yaoi on to level four because that is a very big ultimate to have in the turtle fight. It's coming up in roughly 36 seconds. So Echo as well as Blacklist International, both teams we saw in the best of five before, they like to see what the opponent wants to do first. Blacklist is asking Echo, Echo is asking Blacklist. Now Yaoi, he might get engaged for a little bit. He does have the flicker here. Pops the flicker just to escape. Blacklist International with a resource advantage before the first turtle spawns in 15 seconds. That's going to be Blacklist here, knowing that they can buy time, but up top, Benny! Benny, already caught low, flickered out of that. Blacklist International now with two advantages in terms of resource, and maybe even Oheb can rotate down below. Oh, but there's three members from Echo here. Sanji still clearing the wave. Crowd easy dash is on out. Sanford setting it up. Turtle less than half health. That's gonna be the final blow by Edward. Call easy gonna be stunned up, but has the heavy spin. It does not matter. It's the first blood picked up by Echo, but the turtle will be slain by Blacklist International. Killed or objective Benny gonna be slain in the gold lane. Blacklist strikes back, making it equal. Two ults spent by Blacklist up top. Echo takes two down in the bottom, but they do get 
turtle. I'm talking about blacklist. What's that worth it, LaFell? I would say it's not that worth it because in my personal opinion, getting kills is very good because you can establish map pressure because what's the objective of getting the turtle? Sure, you want the gold. Sure, you want the, 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 the XP, but you want more control. Now, Edward going up against Sanford taking quite a bit of damage and Sanford's going to get chased. Circling Eagle onto Sanford here. Haji does not have the feather air strike. Down to basic attacks coming in. Sanji not going to be here to help him in time. Sanford falls in the XP lane. The Festival of Blood. Lifesteal is just not enough at this level. Three minutes in, and I'm not sure if there's enough. Yeah, no, none at all into the emblems. Many though, look at that. That's gonna be the damage coming in. The Illuminati Blast charged in, but knowing that Ohem has the Purify, they decide not to commit just yet. Yeah, looking at all of the emblems as well as the way that they're setting up, Sanford, his personal goal in this game is to get at least three kills. Once he has that three kills, he will maximize his emblem. Oh my Venus getting poked out just a little bit. But now, looking at the map, if Echo could give those three kills over to Sanford, we can see Echo being a little bit more explosive. You can expect that Sanford's gonna look for it. He's gonna pressure Edward hard here. Sent him home just now because they want to time the way that this turtle goes. Again, we're 20 seconds away. Benikuti pressuring Oheb as well. Oh my Venus and Yaoi playing footsies, making sure that their gold laner gets the advantage. The zoning coming in again, right? This is what we kind of expect in the gold lane matchup. Harith, once you get to level four, isn't really going to be able to threaten the, the Lunox. And even in the XP lane, we saw that Edward was winning early on, but now that Sanford has gone that level four, has gone a few items down, it's a bit tough for Benedetta. Oh, Turtle already spawned. Carl Tizi spots out Haji. Sanford, oh, yeah, there's the RWM. Mm, not going to be able to find anything else, though. The sun does connect with the Feather Air Strike connecting on the Sanford. The Petrify locks him down. Edward finds the pick. Ah, Blacklist International now with a man advantage. Rotating around a turtle. Circling Eagle onto Yaoi. He's going to be able to find a stun. Carl Tizi jumping in. Umina Black charged in with Flicker as well. Oheb with no Purify here. Doesn't use it just yet. Why still winning the Retribution battles on top? This is on Force. Now Yaoi going to be able to dodge away for now. That's a lot of burst damage. As Yaoi will be slain by Edward. Echo losing out in the straight. Blacklist has amazing battlefield awareness. They knew exactly where every member of Echo was. They almost threatened a lot. Orange Steel from Kaldizi, but they're not done. A stun and a knock-up. It's still Matilda Airlines here for Blacklist International. Blacklist is showing what they want to do with this draft. You want to establish control. You want to make sure that the Riverside, you're winning. And the specialty of having a Matilda is when someone overextends, they're not really overextending. In their previous fight, in the Turtle, they were very focused. What do we want to do? Turtle first, but now they want to kill. And they get it, right? It's onto Venus, the Roamer. Anything that Echo can get here in the first five minutes, they will. In the first two, they were willing to trade and get some advantages. But now wait, Asan onto Oheb, forced out the Zaman Force. Pops the Purify as well. The real world inflation almost catches Oheb, but he is able to get out of that one. Haji rotating towards the gold lane with a feather airstrike to clear it out, protecting his tier one up top. This is difficult because we said for Echo, for them to win, they have to win the lanes. Here in the early game, not exactly the story because Blacklist now ahead maybe 1, 1.5k. LaFell, what's going on? I would say it's not enough because Blacklist, they understand this as well. So as long as they delay, as long as they wait for Oheb to get two items, then it's basically they're already doing at least half of their win condition. So it's not about Echo not doing it. It's more about Blacklist seeing this time and time again. We understand how your draft works, so we're just going to play around it. So even though, okay, so here's the thing. Echo, they needed to win by 2K, by 2,000 gold. That's LaFell's threshold. So if Blacklist having 1.5K lead ahead, they're really at the driver's seat. Well, right now, it does seem that way, but Echo are going to be able to force it out. Oheb going to be caught low, but Venus comes in to save Oheb again. Haji with the rotation, circling Eagle to lock Yaoi down. Good selection right now. So by the air strike, will come through. Yaoi going to be able to get the stun down onto Venus before he gets taken low. Now, guess who's here? It's Sanji with the real world inflation. Jumping in, but that you go. It's going to be the guy oh! in the going to be slain, though, by Benny, who uses the chaos to take him down. Sanji still poking Venus down. Echo are looking to get the siege down onto the tier one. Meanwhile, on the turtle side, Carl TZ is going to be taken low with Sanford. It's a 2v2. That's going to be the bravest fighter popped into the back line right now. It's Carl TZ going to be able to find it, and Wise is going to fall. Edward finding the stun onto two with an eye for an eye to dodge away from the CC. But still, Echo. 
They went out on that trade. Not just that trade, but on two fronts. They pushed up top, got a kill down bottom, and took the last hurdle of the game. We got a lot here because, again, 500 gold, that's great. But Sanford having one kill. He has one stack on his his emblem. And now, looking at this, probably he's, he's in too deep. He's looking for a steal here. He does get the orange buff. Not punished enough by Black International. Oh, him and Haji falling in the gold lane once again. We spoke about this. Winning lanes is how Echo can get it done. And Benny, three kills on him right now. Finest example of caster curse. You start talking about it, you start questioning it, and it comes up almost immediately. Yaoi with a Numinal Blast! Definite welcome to cancel it out. That's the anti-CC coming in. As Sanji does the damage onto the tier one. Bravest fighter by Sanford just to get out. Get that anti-CC down, unstoppable. Meanwhile, Blacklist International trying to make their way up to the gold lane. Gonna be poked down by Benny as Carl TZ sieging down that tier two in the gold lane. Carl TZ gonna be careful here. Takes the turret down, gets out with, with relative ease. What a swing for the House of Highlights. Unbelievable. I, I can't believe that maybe four or five minutes ago we were talking about how Blacklist was ahead, possibly way past the LaFell threshold, but now it's Echo who's pushing it 2.5k ahead. Well, they have gone way and above the threshold, and the way that they did it is because they understand, okay, we're just going to stay in lane. There's no use trying to out-rotate Blacklist at this point, so we're just going to say because Oheb is going to be the one that's going to deal a lot of the DPS damage later on, so shut him down first. Right now, there might be a script mission mid. But the airstrike was used up just to clear up the waves. Echo, with his composition so far, can constantly be threatening these sieges. And also, they can also be looking for a lot of plays on the map. A lot of kill pressure here in their lanes. Yep, and that's why they're ranked first in average kill so far. 16 plus plus. Because the way that they attack the game, the way that they approach it with their strategy, is they want to convert from kills. They don't want to take objectives only. They want to win first and then go from there, which is, I think, what they're doing here. They're baiting the Lord. This is a Lord dance if I've ever seen one. Oh, Sanji's taking low. Edward jumps in, but Sanji flickers out on the final blow. The Petrify is still available by Edward right now. He uses eye for an eye, but Sanford notices that. Jumps in with the Bravest Fighter. A lot of resources spent already is wise. Looks for a better position. Haji gonna be able to actually dash in with the wing by oh. wings. That's the Luminar Blast connecting onto Edward. Edward gonna be taken low, taken down by Sanford. And that's going to be a 50-50 play around the Lord. Wise here versus Carl TZ, and Carl takes it down. It's a bond force by Ohem. Not enough to deal the damage right now. Xiaoi's going to be able to get the stun down onto Haji, who's going to be able to dash out of that one with the wings by wing. Whether airstrike to snipe Sanji down. Benny oh! with the dash takes the kill onto Haji. Was that Benny Cutie DD? No, didn't even need the flicker. Dude, that no was flicker. Benny. That was Benny QT. And again, looking at the items here, because we got to see whether they are strong now or not. Looking at Benny QT, having three core items, Cloud Destiny, Lightning Treasure, as well as Divine Glaive. Right now, oh my, oh. Venus getting engaged by Yaoi. Numenon Blast again, locking the Queen down. Venus gonna be chased down under the tier two. Wise here, providing the support. Carl TZ looking for an angle, but will back off for now. Tier one falling in the mid lane. Echo pushing the pace and the tempo. Thou shalt not take my Queen, says Wise. Echo pressuring mid lane tier two, even tier two down bottom. That's Sanford going solo, Lord up top. Echo is 5k ahead here, 11 minutes in. It's still not over because Blacklist International, they can still come back because they have a very BP front line, as well as a lot of damage coming in from Haji and Oheb. Oheb just finished the Holy Crystal, looking at the damage from Haji. Haji can't connect it just yet. Carl TZ is spotting people out. The Lord is here. Will Echo engage? They will. Numenon Blast charged up already. Just to zone the other members away. So Oheb jumps in with Zaman Force. Twice in the front lines, providing the support. Real world manipulation faded in. Sanji not dealing enough damage for now. Blacklist just backing off. Echo doing the same thing. Noticing they have the lead. It's disciplined plays from Echo. Relatively safe defense and siege from Echo. They did their best to get the most out of that Elemental Lord. But we have a Luminous One possibly coming up in a minute and a half. Forcing out. A feathered airstrike. Echo is relentless. They're not leaving. Yeah, but look at the way Blacklist, they're defending themselves because they're not necessarily sacrificing their own HP just to defend their base. Like, they're defending everything without taking too much. So now Blacklist, they're preparing themselves. In case Echo wants to engage, they can fight back. The problem is, Echo, they're not engaging. They know that they have a lead and they're not going to lose the lead. Looking at the items as well, Oh, but before that, 
Looks like everyone is just clearing everything out. Looking at Haji, he already has two main items. He's waiting for his own Holy Crystal. Once he has the Holy Crystal, the, the, the kill pressure is going to be a lot onto Echo. So right now, Blacklist, it looks like that's what they're waiting on. They're waiting for their carries to actually complete the items first. It looks like Echo has cornered Blacklist into their base. And this is the trademark Blacklist defense. A lot of teams worldwide have been on the receiving end of this defensive rubber band. And it's not impossible that Blacklist still comes back. But with Echo at 6K playing this defensively, playing this disciplined, waiting for this Lord coming up in five seconds, it looks like Echo also knows how to combat that. It's gonna be really tough now with a 7,000 gold lead technically built up by Echo. But with Blacklist minimalizing their losses, it seems like despite that 7,000 gold deficit, they're still able to contest, they're still able to open up the map without grouping up S5. Yeah, looking at the map as well, Blacklist, they're not really moving away from each other. They should understand that oh. this Lord is going over to Echo for free, having that Lunox uh -huh. makes it very difficult for you to contest. And that's the power spike we're looking at. Echo, this is the inevitable. They have set themselves up for success here. And for Blacklist, the answer is to send Agent Zero, send Edward into the long lane and try to push that because not a single tier one has fallen for Echo. They didn't even have to use the Retribution, by the way. So Carl Teasy was able to steal the purple buff away. So right now, again, Echo just building up the way slowly but surely to finally take some base turrets down. This is what kind of feels bad as a barrage. You kind of don't care too much about your buffs getting taken away, but what you do care about is it's hard for you to maintain those stacks because Varus is at his strongest at like, what, 15 stacks? Because looking at Wise now, that is a pretty small Wise. That's a small dinosaur there, and you're right. While Echo's taking away even the small camp, the small creeps in Blacklist Jungle, and then freezing the waves, waiting for it to sink with this Lord, then this is the best that Blacklist can do. Oh, there's a couple of ults uh -oh. spent in. Oh, very low. And we're gonna be caught in the Luminon Blast as Benny jumps in with the damage. And that's the combo, the notorious one. As Echo now looking for the siege into the base turret in the mid lane. Lord still marching in the top lane. Concealed play, gonna be popped in. Echo looking for more. That's the fact that Airspike popped in, but look at Sanford, he flickers under Haji, but he's gonna be able to get out for a bit. Haji gonna fall. The circling eagle does not save the queen. Oheb, the last man standing, but Echo will secure game number one. Ang Limang Echo fans make noise all around as their team takes game one. It's a long journey, folks. It's a Marathon, not a sprint. So game one is great for momentum, but they still got to watch their backs. Blacklist will pick up so quick from this victory. Looking at this game, the reason why Echo could beat out Blacklist International is not that Blacklist necessarily made a mistake, is that Echo did not make a mistake. Because with their draft, having the Matilda, they're trying to bait out Echo to over-engage, over-extend, use all of their skills early to get any kind of objectives and then fight back. But Echo, they did not do that. They won the lane. They made sure that Oheb was, was heavily pressured. And then after that, it's like, okay, just don't overcommit. Just take things slow and then end the game. Get profit. Or because they're killer whales, right? Correct. And that's exactly why they know how to use the kill pressure so well. In the gold lane, they knew Lunox versus Heron is a winning lane for the Lunox. Benny QT on a winning matchup. That's already a recipe for disaster if you're a Blacklist fan. Now, they utilize that so much by ganking towards the Lunox. Early on, they weren't going to be able to find those skills, right? But as the Lunox progresses, with the levels starting to gain up, and with those items starting to stack up, that's when the Lunox gets the power spike in the mid-game, and they utilize that perfectly. Not just the laning phase, actually even in team fights, Oheb's Harith was in such trouble. Again, we saw there the winning moment from the eyes of Sanford. His Lapu-Lapu here, despite having a difficult five to six minutes, picked up. Again, I think he was just waiting for LaFell's timing and saying, you know what, I need a couple of kills, I need the blood, the Festival, Festival of Blood, blood. tab triggers, yep. and uh, the uh, Bloodlust Axe. Exactly. And then even Oheb is in trouble. So with that being said, I think we're going to need the help of our analysts to break this down. There's a lot that happened here starting with the draft, a lot as well that went into the mid-game spike for Echo, and even Blacklist struggled to find the rubber band. That's what's scary about the squad, the Orcas. Again, you're right, they're killer whales. When they smell blood, they go for it, and they have perfected 
the execution, even when it comes to lore dances, fellas, right? It, it's so hard to deny uh, that Echo knows exactly what's happening. So with that being said, we're just waiting for our analysts to call in because I'm pretty sure they'll have a field day with this. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to remind you that Battle Night is about to happen. That's happening on January 21st. We've got a lot going on, so make sure you log into the game. There's a lot of in-game bonuses that Shaw can have, all right? Extra BP, star protection points, free hero access, epic skins that come out that very night. So make sure y'all log in, all right? That's happening on January 21st. Let's all celebrate the M4 World Champions. Whoever takes it home, whether it be Echo or Blacks International, Let's all celebrate and tell all of your friends. Now, folks, I think we've said enough here on the desk. It's LaFell, Mirko, and Leo throwing it over to the analysts because they're going to talk about the draft, show us who the MVP is, because I still think it's not so clear cut. Real quick, who do you think it is? Oh, man, it's a really tough Benny one Cutie. here. You were going to say Benny, I'll say I'm Sanford. Sanford. Both of the side lanes. Okay. You know now I'm Sanji. confused. I have what? to swap. Sanji, there you go. You, you said because between Benny and Sanford, that's exactly the perfect setup or payoff. Who's who, right? I, I mean, like, okay, let's, let's just slowly talk about it because Benny Cutie, he stopped the win condition for Blacklist. I mean, to be fair, Blacklist, they got to win the river. They got to win the jungle. But it could not happen even if, say, this, this game extends a little bit longer, right? Benny Cutie was killed up. Wise will not be able to sustain the damage coming in from the Lunas because again, there's no Estus, there's no healing. He can run away, but when he comes back, it's not gonna be much. So for me, it's Manny Cutie. Okay, Ding Ding, Sanford, or Sanji. You know what, I'm gonna make a last minute change here. I think I'm gonna give it to Carl TZ actually. Ooh. The hidden carry. Okay, best in the world. Let's see who it actually is because it's time for the analysts to break it down. Hey, fellas, talk to us. Great MVP predictions <laughs> so far. Thank you so much, Leo, LaFell, and as well as Mirko. Here at the Analyst Sam, we're gonna break it down to you to uncover the mysteries of what this code is so far and what Echo is doing correct. My name is Gideon Q. This is going to be most wanted in Southeast Asia. Wolf, as well as Assassin Dave, you are gonna be the mediator here and it's important that you give a non-biased opinion. I repeat, a non-biased opinion. But with that being said, let's break down straight from the draft. I mean, so far, Song's really strong start coming in from Echo. Now, I gotta say, I really like the Lolita come from Yaoi. Yes. Because every time you give this player anything that can initiate, that can set up a good team fight, this player will pop off. And you saw it in the last game, right? The entire set of Echo, they had a momentum. They understand which objective do they want, which power do they want to pressure. Yep. You saw Yao Yi was set up camps on the top tier one tower, and they find a lot of early game pressure to make game pressure. Oh, there's already the code that the Blacklist International has done, right? We know the pattern of what they're doing. Actually, if you're looking at that game, it's a pretty standard Blacklist game. What Echo did differently this time is they snatched this hero, Lolita. That's why I really agreed with uh, Assassin Day when he said that Lolita was a great pick, because not only does it like um, present to us what, how good Yaoi was, but also how good the drafting plan was for the side of Echo. They countered everything that Blacklist wanted to do with their picks. Well, if we're talking about the draft, I mean, those are the bands, but the picks overall, I think yeah. to the naked eye, most people would understand that Honestly, they're kind of the same thing. They yeah. have the exact same goals with very yeah. slightly different tools. Yeah, and I want to mention that in this game, it's one of the first games in the entire series that we do not have any marksman at all. Right. Right? Like, there's a Lunox versus Ohab on the Harith, on the go lane, which is quite interesting because Benny's Lunox at your counter Harith in the late game, you can one shot yeah. Yeah. with the combo that Lunox has in the, in the kit, and you can look at items. Benny is fully decked out on damage items, no defense whatsoever. Yeah, he didn't need to because of the fact that he has a lot of feeling, right? You have Yakai to frontline for you, you have Lolita to kind of save you in those dire situations, and the Lapu Lapu as well. Blacklist International, like we said, this is the normal code, a standard place, like I'm mean, on Blacklist International, but the order of picks allowed for Echo to actually kind of win over those matchups. Lapu Lapu kind of wins versus Benedetta in many regards. Akai can win versus the, the Akai, if you think about it, uh, or the, it's kind of 50-50 if you think about it, but of course, Yaoi, not only did he prevent like the combo of Blacklist International, he also protected their own Lunox. That's why I really like oh, Echo design game number one. 
Yeah, and I like it too. Personally, when it comes down to the little de details, the little tools that they have, I mean, the fact is, Yves, it's really hard to break her out of the real-world manipulation unless you have a suppress. And again, it's... I mean, Oh My Venus can't really do much about it. The same goes for Edward, but the, the, you can't say the same thing for Echo because you have Lapu Lapu jumping in on the far side, which already is one difference maker. Let's not forget about the invulnerability coming out of any QT. Absolutely. And one thing that I want to mention for Echo in the game one was momentum, right? right. It felt like in the beginning of the game, Blacklist really captured the momentum of the game. But somehow towards the mid to late game is when Echo really start pushing, right? They push a top tier one tower, they find the objective base play, and they give them so much clarity on exactly what they need to do. Yeah. With a player like Yaoi on the setup, whoo, that was just clear gameplay. Yeah, it wasn't easy though. For seven minutes, they kept on trying to break the momentum of Blacklist International. Blacklist are leading a little bit. They were, I mean, Echo was trying to take out Ohem up top. Eventually, after seven to eight minutes, Sanji was able to land the killing blow onto Ohem. It did, uh, you know, it did require them to have a lot of tries, but they were successful in the end. And 2 0 eight. We saw this, Gideon. We reacted to this. His flicker to the left side during yep. the Lord fight that was. Crazy! That was, what, criminal? That's the that was criminal gaming, for sure. He is just stealing hearts and stealing minds at this point. The conditioning is starting to build up, but this is only game number one. So, people at the caster's desk, this is your MVP going over to Sanji. I'll let that sit in for a little bit longer. But I think, you know, we really have to make sure that the draft doesn't escalate for this, especially if you are in Blacklist's position. Are there adaptations that we're expected to see? Yeah, and Sanji, well deserved MVP here. I want to mention one of the lore fight you talk about, he flickered to the left side. That was beautiful, and also he was lingering with one HP, right? Yeah. Very little HP, and he still has so much impact. Just to show you how much impact he had in the early game, this is from the beginning of the game to five minutes. You can take a look at Sanji's heat map, right? This guy in the mid lane was dominating the mid lane and started voting towards EXP because Turtle was towards the bottom side in the beginning of the game. Yeah, and then eventually he will go to the gold lane where they want to really kill um, Oheb back out, up top. They know that the reason, the way for them to win the mid game team fights is to deny Oheb to the farm. But then again, you can see a Blacklist International how much, how many times they have saved OM. Now, Hope also played it well, but eventually they will have to fall to the tempo of. You know, in the beginning, Blacklist had a momentum because they, they understand that win condition as well. Right. That's why you right. saw Farsa going towards the top right. side to help OHAB so much. I think um, we're going to capture some highlights here. Whoa, this is one of the engages, even though the turtle went through Blacklist, but Echo got two kills out of it. I think even more so, like, you could see just the small little plays coming out from everybody here. They're trying their absolute best to make sure that they minimize the profit coming in from either side. But once the momentum started to fall into Echo's favor, I think this is where things started yeah. to change, especially for the gold lane. That's right. You're gonna have to... We have to talk about crouching here, right? Although we aren't seeing a lot, he, the way he secured all of these turtles, then eventually the First Lord, then constantly just applying the pressure against Blackness International while keeping himself safe and really just region around the Lord Ooh. area. I think that's also amazing coming out from Carl TZ himself. Yeah, absolutely. Here from the highlight, you see how clear Echo rotation were, right? right? They know exactly where they're going, they know exactly where tower they're trying to get. And sure enough, it paid them many dividends. Yeah. And I think going to game two, Black need to think about their momentum as well. Yeah. Once they had a game plan, you stick to the game plan instead yeah. of being disrupted by Echo. I see. Yeah, but you know, we, we are not allowed to like predict what draft because we're not going to be drafting right. But I kind of want to predict. I think Lolita is going to be a prime commodity next game. All right, Lolita could be the commodity here. Casters, are you ready? Because game two is about to begin. Take it away. The bespectacled boys of the analyst stand are getting heated. Who wouldn't, right? With a matchup like this, Blacklist International versus Echo with the Orcas drawing first blood. There's a huge case for everyone to be MVP, but yes, we had to take our hats off for Sanji there. Real quick, let me remind everybody about the M4 Battle Night goes live this January 21st. Expect loads of events and rewards up for grabs in game. First off, complete battle tasks in the game on January 21st to get a skin choice chest. You can choose a skin you like the most from the chest. Aside from that, battle bonus awaits you on the same day. Play matches and you'll get team star protection for three matches. Double star raising points, double protection points, double EXP and double BP for five matches. We are not stopping there. Five matches. Again, you gotta play them. Free access to all heroes and loads of epic skins will also be available that very day. Save the date, log into the game on January 21st, enjoy the matches you play and win tons of rewards. Let's all celebrate the M4 championships together, including your friends. I'm on desk here with Mirko and LaFell, 
And again, it was mentioned earlier and they showed us everyone can carry from Echo. And that's why we had such a hard time predicting the MVP for game number one, right? Because, sure, you said it was Benny. Benny did maybe close to the most damage onto the Barats, especially just melting him down. Sanji with very good zone, very good damage too. In the end, I said Carl Tizi, right? Because the way they played in that team fight was every single member from the side of Echo had their own agenda, had their own tasks, right? They were going to dish out damage. Some of them are going to put Blacklist in a disarray where the front to back that Blacklist have drafted for themselves would not work. Meanwhile, Blacklist, they played for this one vision, one mission. And that's what gave Echo the upper hand. So now we got to look at the hero big recap. And, and yeah, Sanji did a lot of damage. 59,000 damage. That is a lot. But yes, like you said, the way that they're moving around with this draft, I would say this is quite a difficult draft for you to play discipline at because there's a lot of ways for you to start the fight. So you are tempted to actually start the fight. But the way that they're doing it is they completely understand we don't have to, as long as Blacklist are not here, are not present to protect their turrets, to protect their jungle, then we're just gonna focus on getting the objectives. Like we see Echo, they can play explosively. But it looks like for this game, they have very much matured. And I like that I said before, they learn fast and they learn very fast in this game. They are only doing it what is necessary. Yep, in hindsight, given what Echo has employed, it's a clear box strategy. Again, you see it on the map. It's the Eve and then you have the Akai who either pulls someone in or pushes them out. For Blacklist, I think they were put into a position, forced into a position wherein they had to break that box. If they couldn't, then they were on the back foot and that's why game one went to Echo. And I love the fact that in the early game, right, Echo, the way they played it was they're completely fine with actually throwing bodies at Blacklist International. Sure, here, have a frontliner, have another, because it's always just Yaoi and Carl Tizi who actually gets taken down, right? With that, they give so much space to the other carries, the Sanji, the Sanford, and even Benny to pop off. And folks, with that being said, it's so important, again, to pay attention to the draft. You, you can't go into war without the right tools, the right equipment to win you those battles. Going into game two here, it's about time we get into the draft. Lafel, well, what changes do you expect? I'm expecting a change in the way that they're drafting for Oheb because even in their key to victories, you gotta look at Oheb to really carry the game and for him to have an easier time, he needs to make sure he wins the lane. Sometimes that does mean you're gonna delay your hero a little bit, potentially getting banned out in the later stage of the game, but at least you have the information to know what's going on and in fact, Looking at the draft right now, we talked about it in the pre-show where Blacklist International, they do the best as a second pick. So for right now, in the first pick, they don't have the necessary information of what Echo wants to do. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things that we don't talk about so much, but as a team, not having their preferred, uh, I would say, side, side to, to the pick and ban may actually hurt them as well. And that's exactly what's very interesting here, right? Because Echo, they do better in the first pick position. Now, they're actually popping off on the red side of the map, second pick. Meanwhile, for Blacklist, like you mentioned, they do enjoy being the second pick a bit more. We saw from the statistics earlier on, 72% win rate. But here, you can see the adjustment also made by Echo. In game number one, they banned out the Estes in the second phase of draft. Now, they're prioritizing it here, but they're leaving out a hero. Open. Blacklist did this. They banned it. Frederick. And now, wow. this just shows uh, the priorities that Blacklist have. Being here in blue side, having that one pick is so powerful because you get to build the lineup around it. And the answer by Echo is a far side and a glue. The glue, more of a hero that we don't ever see. And given that the Fredrin was the focus for Blacklist, now Echo have, again, solid choices for drawing that box. My question is, because they're picking up the goo, are they like trying to bait Blacklist International to pick up the Faramis? Because the Faramis is one of the counters for goo, but it looks like they're not going to bite. They're just going to take the Valentina. Nope. And this shuts down a lot of playmaking ultimates, just like the Grog with his wild charge. But before we go even further, this is a quote by Tic Tac. Their chemistry is really solid since they've been together for a long time. It's so hard to cut them down. The, this is the hardest part. In, in, in fighting Blacklist International. And I completely agree, Coach Dick. They have been together even before they won the World Championship. Yep. And now, 
a year has passed and they're still here. They're still making a claim for that trophy that we're all looking at the center of the stage. Going into the second phase, Echo bans out XP lane choices because again, Sanford's happy with the glue. They go ahead and ban out the Lapu Lapu. I just gotta say, there's an odd absence of joy. Yeah, the joy here, not really gonna be prioritized by any of the teams in the first phase. Heck, we might even, you know, we might even actually see it ignored completely yeah, in the draft for game number two. Joy is a bit of a gimmick hero, that's what I call her, right? Because it's all about just distracting the enemy team. Anyways, though, I do want to talk a little bit about this XP lane or just Blackness International's draft. Because in a lot of their drafts here, we usually see that Fredrin is used as a flex pick. Not for Blacklist, though. Every single time the Fredrin was, is picked up by Blacklist, well, not every single time, but 90% of the time, it's jungle, right? Yeah. They always want a playmaker on Edward. That's the reason you're still seeing that Lapu ban here, the respect being given out, and also the Claude ban. They want to get rid of a hero that can blink out of the Detonus Welcome, can blink out of the real pure engage from the glue, and even from the poke that's coming in from the far shot. But I still like the way that Blacklist are drafting because we've discussed that the way that they're going to win is through Oheb as well as Edward. So now that they've seen at least 80% of the draft coming in from Echo, now they should have enough information to really understand what kind of heroes they should get because if Oheb and Edward loses lane, they're going to lose priority in the jungle or the riverside and that's really going to impact how Blacklist plays. So this last two picks will really impact because at least now they've seen the Brody. What do you want to use against the Brody? They still that need to put a, Yes, but they also still need to put a hero on Agent Zero, and that might be the key. Benedetta's still yeah. open here, but it looks like Echo has an answer. Oh, nope, there, there you go. go. We mentioned the joy. Oh, and they left it open. It's the wow. Franco from Yaoi too. I love it, right? Again, we mentioned about the joy. More of a distraction uh, than a prio pick, right? Yes. But it is a good pick here. Noticing that Blacklist International, they're going to have that back line really targeted down by Echo. So what the joy is going to do here is to create space by being that annoying hero in the enemy back line. Thing is, though, Echo waited for this. They knew yeah. it was coming, right? It was either they went for a Kufra pick, a Cho pick, or they see the Joy, instantly they go for the Franco, they can lock the Joy down. Yeah, but given that Cho is banned out, Echo had the ball in their court. Uh -huh. It was their shot to make. You mentioned the Kufra. Yaoi had a lot of uh, crazy games on the yeah, Kufra. Chance to play that, but instead they go for the Franco. You know, a game lost be damned, but we don't care about it going into the Valentina. We don't care if Haji gets it. And looking at it, is it going to the hands of Valentina? Yes, of course, yes, Haji, because again, there's a Fredrin. That's definitely Wise's hero. Yeah, I'm just going to say, we're going into game number two. Blacklist International going up against Echo. And what I wanted to say was that Echo picked up the most banned hero uh -oh. of Blacklist International. They keep banging, banning out this, this Franco. So now, Franco in the hands of Echo, this might be a bad game for Blacklist. Yep, and the reason why is because it breaks the Ubin. You don't get to engage on your terms. And in the hands of the playmaker, Yaoi, it's going to be a great way to, again, either set up a box that Blacklist is not comfortable with or a break whatever Blacklist is trying to do. And this is a similar approach to, again, uh, what RRQ did against Echo yesterday, right? They picked up that Franco, but unfortunately for RRQ, they didn't have anything to build around the Franco. Meanwhile, here, I was questioning the Brody pick earlier on. I was like, what? Brody into Lolita? Then you see the Franco and you're like, there you go. That's what it was for. You hook the opponent away and what's the Lolita gonna do, right? Sure, he, she can actually jump in quicker maybe to get that shielding down, but it's a bit too risky. And if Venus is on the receiving end of the hook, it's gonna be a lot to deal with here. And Venus right now is gonna be caught. Yaoi gonna throw the iron hook. Good dodge by Venus. Yeah, looking at this game, Blacklist International, I would say after the group stages, this Franco is a nightmare for them because it is the reason why they've lost. So now we gotta see their, their evolved form. Have they been able to find a way to fight against this Franco? Right now, looking at the lanes, not a lot is going on. Wise goes down to fight against Sanford, but I don't think they can secure a kill here. Too sustainable, gets out of that one. Wise is level four, Carl Tizi as well. Both of these junglers clearing very, very fast. In the end, it's Hachi who actually steals the gold buff away. Yep, looking at a potential 3v3, 4v4 down bottom as they both jockey for position, finding a good pull for this Lord. It looks like Echo is the one 
first on the scene. Carl Thiesi whacking away. Oh, there's a ult! Yeah, Sanford zoning very, very well here with the split split as well. Freaking wise away. Newman of last can be charged in. On to Carl Thiesi, but no! It's Yaoi who finds the Iron Hook and Carl Thiesi finds the Retribution. Edward in the back line. That's a stolen for the air strike as the Bloody Hunt comes down onto Edward to lock him down. Sanford finding Wise, the flicker over. Edward picking up another. It's a two for one right now. Echo still equal though in terms of the trade because they secured the turtle. I like how Blacklist played that fight just now because even though they were fo focusing on the turtle, they kind of understood that it's not 100%. It's not even 50-50. It was kind of a 60-40 at that point. So they tried to find the alternate win condition around the turtle, which is try to get a little bit more kills. So they were willing to expand a lot of their uh, resources there. Looking at the items right now, really not a lot of power spikes just yet. The Beatrix here Piloted by Ohad understands that there is a chance he's gonna get attacked, and right now Carl Jesus is getting attacked. He is the frontliner though, so he's happy taking that damage in. Haji is gonna be the one losing a whole lot of HP from Sanji. Venus does too, and now that mid control is for Echo. And you're seeing here the difference between Haji and Sanji, a Valentina and a Farsa. It seems like now, when the ult is ready on Sanji, he's just willing to pull it out and then force Haji to respond. It's all about timing, it's all about engagement. Oh. And Yaoi, did he do it? No, the Filipino sniper still confirms the gold crab. That was an insane calculation, man. An insane micro play by Oheb, right? He, he knows exactly how it was gonna go down, even with the snipes there. I gotta say, in my head, he was holding his breath and like, yeah. one. To pump, just get it. And I just want to touch a little bit about the emblems because in terms of scaling, I kind of feel like Blacklist, they have an advantage because Oheb is using a Marksman emblem compared to Benicuti using the Assassin emblem. He's going to have a lot of damage, but still, in terms of scaling, Blacklist, they have it in the bag. And now, looks like Echo, they're just going to push Blacklist away. Don't push too hard. Oh, not an engagement that Echo wants to go for because, again, they spent a few ults there. Mind you, Yaoi still has the bloody hunt, still has a hook waiting on him. Benicuti as well, for an apart memory, goes for a pull, Numen of Blast charged up by the Queen, that as well by Carl TZ. And Carl TZ is gonna be able to spin him out. That's the bloody hunt locking Edward down. Edward taking low, but still able to survive for now. Torn apart memory can popped in as Benny flickers forward to pick up the kill. Turtle over the blacklist right now as Sanford jumps in with Swiss Split, bringing Venus back for the damage to come through once again. Sanji picking up. Yaoi almost finding the iron hook. That's the mobilized. Haji pours the flicker out and Echo will be able to take the better trade. 2-0, Turtle goes over the blacklist though, as well. It's actually Echo who took it, wow! Clear win now for the Orcas! Yeah, clear win because they have a lot of birds in the early series of the game because Wise being in the front line, he can CC them for a bit and Oheb, that was lucky that he did not get cooked. And so far, Oheb will be fine. Looking at the items, player power spikes right now. Looking at Edward, he's not going to be tanking a lot, but he can do a lot of damage because of the Genius One. So as long as he can prolong the fight, he can really help himself out as well as Haji. Speaking of which, Haji is, is using a skill kind of itemization. So he's not going to be too strong right now, but I would say in eight minutes, He's really gonna, gonna, gonna power through uh, Echo. Yeah, and honestly, I do really want to talk about how Blacklist International are negating the bully potential from the Brody, right? Because earlier we saw the lane frozen by Benny Cutie in that lane. Wise instantly stop, stopped by into the gold lane, even risking his life just to help Oheb clear it out. And this is what's gonna get Blacklist to that item power spike for Oheb in the gold lane. The Beatrix has been farming very well, considering that he is in the losing matchup up against that Brody. Yep, and we're just waiting for that to flourish. We're just waiting for that to get the payoff. Bottom lane, though, you see the XP laner just leaving constantly. Very good wave clear from both the Joy and the Blue. Oh, the pull on Wise! The Iron Hook, and that's gonna be Bloody Hunt. Chained in with that as well. Come as Edward jumps in with a lot of damage coming down. Sanji with the wings by wings, getting out. Numenom last and for the airstrike stolen away by Haji with the IMU. Venice Rage! Able to find the kill on the Sanford. Carl Teasy can be gunned down. That's the iron hook to provide the peel necessary for Carl Teasy. It's a one for one. The XP lane traded in for the jungle. Look at Benny Cutie. Benny Cutie. Oh, watch out. Benny from the back line. Oheb hasn't spotted him yet. We're going for the turtle. There's the pull. Yaoi as well. Look at this. Prime positioning from the Echo Squad. Oh, he's revealed. There's the hook. Yeah, we missed it. Gonna be stunned up. Venus actually onto the turtle. Carl Teasy with a quarter of his HP bar. 
Oh, that's the feather air strike prematurely popped in. Sanji's gonna be zoned away now, but Benny, again, this is the man that we're gonna be looking at. Wise, gonna be hooked down. That's the moment for Benny to jump in. That's the damage coming through the turn of our memory as well. To oh, take the turtle what? and to take Ohem. Girl DZ with a deathless welcome. Not gonna be able to find it just yet. Sanford onto Venus, bringing him back. New number Black 3 popped in, but he's not gonna be able to get charged all the way. Edward stunned up, suppressed, bloody hunt popped in. Yeah, we gonna fall oh. to the hands of Edward as Sanford still wants to keep on going. Sanji rotating back into the mid lane. Why is he gonna be brought back? It's a pause here in the seventh minute of the game. Messy engagement, and the payoff was just about to come up. Benny Curie able to hide in that bush, put a few marks on several members of Blacks International, plus on the turtle, which allows Echo to pummel on through forward, but you can't discount the fact that Blacklist played that very well as well. Yeah, Blacklist played it very well, but again, Benny Cutie just understanding the situation, not understanding like just his hero, just Blacklist hero, but he's like, okay. Because I kind of feel like a lot of people looking at that situation, Ohe was kind of isolated by his team. It was prime position to just stun him up, get some stacks in, and then just, just, just kill him off just like that. But he's like, no. I'm going to wait, SA. I'm going to make sure everyone is close enough. He gets into turret range. He can get stacks onto a lot of people and get maximum value from his ult. And that's what he did. He got maximum value from his ult. And again, there's a very thin line between, I guess, a mistake and being loco, right? That was, <laughs> that we was were, pretty loco. That we was so pretty close loco. To, for it to being a mistake. But the fact that Benny's still alive now uh, at the cost of, of Carl Teasy's life, it allowed for it to be local. And it comes down to trigger discipline, right? The fact that he was in the bush for so long. Even Yaoi is spotted and yeah. he's still stuck. He, he was like, and okay, no one checked the bush. I'm as committing, well. bro. I'm committing. And he committed, right? Because Yaoi was spotted out already, they were like, no way. There's no way a Brody is waiting in <laughs> that bush. Yep. It turns out. That's how Benny plays, buddy. No way a marksman will flank, right? I mean, that's yeah, like an assassin Benny? kind of thing. Yeah, uh, Benny's an assassin sometimes. You can kind of say he's an assassin because of the way he plays these marksmen. He flickers forward, he looks for flanks, and here, we're going to see the player head-to-head. -head. Never oh. let them know your next move. That's what Benny did. Never let them know your next move. And, and that's what makes him a force of nature. That's what makes him the storm. He just comes up. And here, leading these two players, uh, the gold laners, are these roamers, all right? Yaoi, the playmaker, and his idol, Mumshu. Oh, my Venus. Again, they're two different kinds of roamers, two different kind of team captains. But the way that they lead their teams are just perfect for their play style. We've seen it, right? Again, uh, Yaoi with more flashy heroes. But for Venus, it's time to enable. But here, we're going to be put in right into the team fight. Echo with... Actually, it's a uh, pretty good trade now that I see it for Blacklist. Oh, Not yeah. that bad. Yeah. Benny actually fell. And the airstrike, though, from Sanji in the mid lane, making it in favor of Echo. All right, something transpired in between the time we resumed and paused in. But for now, real quick, folks. Blacklist forcing out a push up top. Buff still secured per side, and we're looking at a possible kill on Edward. Nope. That's Edward for you. Gets out in relative ease again, right? Echo tried pressure, but now it's just for Blacklist International to punish in the goal well, in the other Red side of the map, which is going to be the XP lane. They even tried to deny as much as possible from Benny. Forced to use the torn apart memory to get those last hits. This is the world stage, so I'm allowed to be a little bit more critical looking at the way that the game is transpired. Oh, no, oh! Yaoi, we just spoke about this. Yaoi versus Venus, and Yaoi is gonna be able to find that iron hook. Oh, oh! Connecting onto Wise, bringing it back under the tier one, and that's everyone collapsing. Benny with a torn apart memory back up on that cooldown is gonna be able to secure it for the edge right now. On to Haji and Ohem. Haji gonna be stunned up, has the feather air strike, but both teams disengage. King and the Queen in a flash goes out. I mean, Edward able to make the most of a bad situation, but LaFell, what does this mean? <laughs> First of all, I just want to say I'm so glad I was interrupted because I was about to say, <laughs> Black was actually looking pretty good because Oheb is gonna scale up and Yaoi's not hitting the hooks, but never mind. Yaoi got a very crucial hook. And the thing is, this is the time where Benny Cutie, I would say is almost at his max because he already has his Blade of Despair as well as the Fury Hammer. Enough penetration, enough raw damage. This is the time you force the fight. This is not about waiting. If you see an opportunity, just go for it. And it looks like Blacklist has already found their window. Haji 
Pulling out Sanford, Carl Deasy losing the pull battle against Wise. Blacklist have a small favorable position over the Lord. It's closer to the south, closer to Wise. They spot on Venus. Yowie throws out a hook. And now and the Lord Dance continues. It's a very slow Lord Dance. It's a macro centric play here. Mid control. It's still fought for. That's going to conceal though. Yeah, we're going to be able to find Haji. Oh! Bloody Hunt as well. That's the damage coming through in a turn apart. Memory finds its mark. The Venom Rage to follow it through. Yeah, we're going to be taking down Sanford. Jumps in with split split. Venus with the Manon Blast. Stunning him up right now. It's called DZ. going to be taunted up. But I expect in the back line. Oh, it's going to be bomb caught. Wise now with the Appraiser's Wrath. Still able to sustain for a bit as Sanford still on that split split. He jumps back away. Still Venus going. taking low. That's going to be Benny dealing out of damage. Now with the turn of Mark Memory. Benny QT with a flicker forward again. Styling on Blacklist International. That team fight could not have been better for Echo. Four down, no clap back from Blacklist. And Echo now making a beeline straight for this Elemental Lord. Okay, now Edward coming in, not gonna be able to steal. But yeah, in this game, objectives are important. And Sanford, he's gonna get chased. Will he actually get down? Yaoi stops the progression of Edward. And as I'm saying, objectives are very important. But it doesn't have to be the turrets. It doesn't have to be the Lord kills our objectives as well. And again, Echo, their draft, they have a lot of big potential. So they're really using their draft to define us. I like the, uh, the way that they approached it. Don't fight the Lord. Kill them first. And they did. They found bodies, pushed them all the way behind tier two down bottom. And it's putting on my Venus, who just hit the rank first one, average assist, 10.4 per game here in M4, into a weird position. When do I use Numenon Blast? When do I protect my teammates? When do I find a proactive spot, a window for us to clap back? And it's looking harder and harder by the minute. Echo pushes mid tier one, and now they're threatening tier two as well. Watch Sanji, he's concealed. Yeah, and he pops in the feather air strike. Zoning all heavy away as Edward jumps in closer. Sanji with wings by wings, getting out. Feather air strike being popped, Sanji flickers out. Call TZ. Finding the death of his welcome onto Wise. He's gonna be stunned up again. Oh, now Blast all off from Venus out of nowhere. Sanford still on the front lines. Benny QT dealing with damage right now. Edward's gonna be able to jump into the back line, but the bloody hunt catches Edward. And a total no. apart memory silences him, takes him down. Sanji with wings by wings. Oh, he's gonna be taken low. Forced to flicker out oh. by Yaoi. And Sanford flicker forward. Now, Echo still on the march. With another air strike taking Venus down. Haji is all alone. Terrifying Yaoi. Still able to survive oh. with the iron oh. Connects again, and Echo have wiped out Blacklist International. They're looking for the end. No minions on the board. They're forced to back away. Five for one plus two major objectives pushed in by the Orcas. This is both discipline and ruthlessness. LaFell, where'd they pull this from? I got, I, first of all, I gotta say, there's a reason why Franco is the most banned hero for Blacklist International. I kind of feel like going to the next game, it has to be put into contention. Now, Blacklist, how this really happens is because Echo always finds a way to actually dish out damage onto Oheb because every single fight, look at where Oheb is positioning. It's not that he's positioning bad, it's just that he has to constantly run away. He has to run away from Benny Cutie. He has to run away from Sanji, from Sanford, from Yaoi. There's so many ways he can get caught and it's so hard to micromanage all of it, especially when Echo, the way that they attack, sometimes Oheb doesn't see it coming. It sounds like Blacklist has been overloaded by Burst and also a good amount of CC. And those two things are lethal against a lineup like Blacklist against the Ubis Strat. And they just can't pull it off here as Benny Cutie forces a push up top. And that's a clean tier two tower take, gonna help open up this luminous lord for Echo. Now 8k ahead, 8k ahead at 13 minutes. That's insane. And on top of that, Benny is on a hero like the Brody who snowballs like an absolute monster. And you can see here, this is the play by Blacklist International. They still want to contest. Lord taken to half HP. Carl Tizi still on him. This is the Lord Dance. At the mid lane, pressure will be popped in from Echo. 8,000 gold leaders by their airstrike will be popped in the zone. Other members away. Carl Tizi with that as well, combining and Haji stealing. For the airstrike again, the better spray. Dino the Mount Blast. Why steals it away? Yaoi got the bloody hunt, but it's all for oh, 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 oh. all alone. Yaoi's gonna be gone down. No oh, way! of the world stage. He takes game two away from Blacklist International. I just gotta say, man, 
The way they set up the entire map, they're setting up for a checkmate. And then Benny Cutie is like, I don't care about pawns, I don't even care about queen. I'm going for the king, and that is the crystal there right now. 2-0, Echo over Blacklist International. What is this man made of? Oh my god, how many times has he found this play? The storm, the typhoon, the hurricane, Bagyong Benny, born and bred to split lanes and take games. Wow. The shot calling though that was needed to make that play happen. I mean, again, it looks like Echo is not just, they understand the draft, they just understand Blacklist in general. You guys want to clump up together, go ahead. Hey, we're going to take the Lord. You're going to contest for it, right? Well, go ahead. We're going to split push. I think this is just critical understanding of what Blacklist is going to do before Blacklist even does it. Because again, throughout the game, they're still winning the lanes. And look at how they're, they're rotating around the map because, okay, I'm not the analyst here. I mean, I'm analyst on the desk, but not on the stand. But look at how when the Lord was being pushed, Sanford, he could have pushed as well, but he avoided it. He went straight to the Lord and he didn't care about the Lord. He didn't care about the jungler. No, 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 no. He just went straight to Oheb. And he doesn't care. I just want to slow down Oheb. And then because of that, everyone was focused. We got to take care of Oheb. Now that they're taking care of Oheb, wait, Ben Cutie. Yep. It's sensory overload. And it came down to the fact that Blacklist could not respond. And that's how Echo took game number two. More on that in just a bit. We'd like to remind everyone and give a special shout out to Secret Lab, the official gaming chair partner of M4. We're talking about a built-in lumbar support system that you can adjust to your spine. An incredible magnetic memory foam head pillow and brand new fabrics in all sorts of colors and designs. The Secret Lab Titan Evo 2022 gaming chair is designed to keep everyone seated in incredible comfort for a long, long time. I'm talking about a best of seven that goes all the way. In the MPL Philippines Grand Finals in Season 10, they went to Game 6. And boy, oh boy, was I ready for more. And here tonight, I hope everyone is. But it looks like Echo are thinking something else. They're, they're, they're going fast here. They're going way too fast for the world champions to respond. But with that being said, on behalf of Mirko LaFell, we're going to throw it over to the analysts. Thanks, Leo. But today, we are seeing a team that has perfected a technique. Science plus violence. Get out of the way, Hurricane Katrina, because Benny QT is going after your homes. They're going after your base. Welcome back to the Atlas Dan. My name is Gideon Q. This is going to be Assassin Dave as well as Wolf here to break it down for you one more time. This is an outstanding performance coming out from Echo. There are a few things I want to mention. Number one, momentum going towards Echo. Number two, the name of the game is Sanford and Benny QT, right? Those two were popping off in that game. I mean, like, Sanford was literally one week pouring with the glue. He's the monster, aka glue monster. I mean, like, what can Blalix do at this point? You know, they have to stop the momentum of Echo for sure. But it's like the opposite way around. Blacklist want to play their own brand of the game, their own code, right? And we saw that in back-to-back -back games. They know how to operate. They know these heroes, the ins and outs of the Ube strategy that they're trying to employ against Echo. But it's just that Echo is just stopping them on their tracks. I think that the reason why Blacklist are losing back-to-back -back games is because they kept on playing the same game. Here's the thing, right? In the back room, when we were talking and discussing about this draft, something about Echo that really stands out is the fact that, you know, they're not tunnel visioning anymore. They're yeah, not playing hyper right. defensively. They have playmaking capabilities. Absolutely. And let's take a look at the item, right? Benny QT with 10,000 gold, closer to 11,000 gold, A11. In fact, everybody's KDA on the carry position, right? 511 on Sanford, 508 on Sunji. All these carry positions are absolutely dominating. Now, I'm interested to find out the MVP later on yeah. once we get there, because I think even though we got so much farm, so much resource to Benny, it's actually Sanford who set up the play for the teammates. Okay, now we're going to be jumping over to the, po uh, to the post stats here, and I'm really interested to see the overall team fight participation. Ooh. Edward having 
hundred percent. But the control from Echo, like imagine Edward being part of every single one of these fights, and yet Echo, not one of them, not even a hundred percent. They are dividing and conquering so well. Yeah, and you know when you're talking about how Sanford was uh, instrumental, this uh, playmaking potential, right? From King Camilo from Gideon. Totally agree with you guys because I think that Echo, their shot selection in this game, particularly internal fights, was amazing. Was on point. Sanford knows who to jump onto. Even he chooses sometimes Oh My Venus. Sometimes it's going to be wise. It depends on the situation, what uh, the situation calls for, so that Echo will win those turtle fights. Then, when it comes to those crucial moments, where there's like a 50-50 or even like a, uh, the odds are in their favor, they utilize the spacing coming out from Yawis Franco and of course Galtis is Daytona as welcome to this place, Blacklist International, for them to not get into their bubble. Absolutely, right? Sanford on the glue monster was insane. He has pinpoint accuracy. You're absolutely yeah. on point on that. He knows exactly which person to carry away, but right? in objective, in turtle fights, and also in lore fights. Sometimes you get to the back line. I remember this one time when Benny Cudi flickered in for the ultimate, for torn apart memory, get a double kill, and that was all set up by Sanford. Yeah. He was literally one way forward, taking all the damage, and staying alive. Personally for me, I don't know what the communications coming out from Echo is going to sound like, but I can't wait for them to drop it. But let's have a look at the MVP of this Jeez. game, Benny QT! Domination, and more importantly, nobody escapes this hurricane. And I think that it is now safe for me to say for all over the world that he is now the holder of the gold standard, gold lane standard. The way he positions himself is amazing to look at. Thanks. It's textbook, right? If you want to learn how to utilize and position a marksman, do look at Benny Cutie's games because of how he's able to just um, win the matchups in the laning stage. Eventually, team fights his timing with the flicker, and the ultimate was was phenomenal. Yeah, and one thing I want to point out about Benny in this game, he put out the very characteristic and very special Echo style split push, right? The <laughs> yeah. marksman split push in the late game. Right. Just when you think, okay, Marks, the Brody has to be in the team fight. I mean, it's a marksman, that's the most damaged source, he got the most farm, he has to be here. And the next thing you know, your base is gone. This guy has 45% kill participation only, and yet he's the win condition, right, for the team. All right, let's sniff out a little bit of how Benny QT actually plays the way he does, how he positions himself with the heat map from five to 10 minutes here. He's supposed to be the cleanup crew for the rest of the squad. Walk me through this here. All right, so he started with a top lane, right? But at five minutes where the turtle is uh, gonna respond, the second turtle of the game, he was there. Look at him, look at that bush. That, uh, the, the, this between the purple buff and the turtle. He stayed for that for a long time, then found an opening during the turtle fight, take out the uh, OHIP. That was a great play. Look back at that play. But afterwards, though, he went to the XP lane. He knows that the golden is already done for. All they need to do is to get more influence in the other part of the map so that they can set, set up for the next turtle. I mean, so far this game has been looking super dominating here. And if we look at the MVP highlights overall, that, that when oh, does Blacklist God. actually, you know, try and come back to me if you were in their position? Benny QT is he's like a assassin marksman player. <laughs> yeah. You know, like he's always behind you on the side of you. Oh, this is a beautiful play by the entire side of Echo. He started off with a hook flicker from Yaoi, and then the ultimate, beautiful ultimate from Farah the dinosaur. It, it just shut down the, the V Vice combo, right, from the side of Blacklist. And take a look at the bottom side. This is where Sanford set up the play. And Benny Kitty flickered and finished off the kill, the executioner. I want to see the split push in the end. I think that highlight was just so good. How does this guy just quietly and sneakily go into yeah. your base and take everything? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with just the go. way he kind of positions himself. And more importantly so, Echo has a huge priority on ha where Haji is. They expect Wise to be in a certain position. They expect Oheb and Venus to be in another position. But more importantly so, they needed to ensure that the playmakers, Ooh. Oh My Venus, and as well as Haji, they need to know their position before they make a decision. And Blacklist International kind of plays the, like you said, plays the same game. They're very good at it. I'm not saying that they're bad at it or that, that it is a mistake for them to keep on doing it because that's their winning formula. But it feels like in games number one and two, Echo just read through that, knows the steps that they're going through, and then counted them every step of the way. They I broke the code. There has to be a little bit of a curveball for Blacklist come game three. They broke the code. What can I say? Wait, it's not to over. Relax, yeah, relax. it's not over just yet. It's a best of seven, but let's see what Marikar are up to.
We feel like in a land of down with all of the heroes and the players. Important player, we have Dlar and Marky. Halo Dlar, apa kabar? Baik. Baik. Coba oh. dong disapa dulu pakai bahasa Indonesia dong. Indonesian words, Indonesian words. Bisa dong, tapi masih sedikit. Ah, oh, he can do but only a little bit. Oke, okay. sample, sample, sample. Aku udah makan tadi. Oh, what does that mean? That means he have eaten. Okay, what can you say in Bahasa? <laughs> Aku makan nakdi. Oh, translate the lar, translate. Translate. Translate in Tagalog. Yeah. yeah. Kumain na daw siya ng makdo. Ah, okay. Okay, Okay. did you guys expect it was gonna be a 2-0 for Echo? Did you expect that performance from them? Sa akin, uh, hindi kasi sa tingin ko, dikit lang yung mga laban dapat. Eh. Kasi alam ko yung blacklist, laging handa yan. Okay, he wasn't expecting it because the games are too close and he knows that blacklists are always prepared. Dilar? Sa akin naman, ano? Hmm. Inexpect na unang abante yung Echo kasi meron silang momentum galing silang lower bracket eh. Oh, you expected Echo to advance because you have the momentum because they're coming from the lower bracket? Okay, now Dilar, you've been with VYs for four seasons even before MPL. You're with them. If you can give us an inside scoop because you know VYs really well. How do you think they're reacting right now with Zero to what's going through their mind and usually what do they say and do when they're backstage? Uh, tingin ko dito nagagana si, yan, eh, si Venus eh. Kasi sobrang galing niya sa gantong parte. Kung paano mag-adjust, tapos pag dumamang yung kalaban, alam niya kung paano, paano babalik ta rin yung laban. He thinks this is Venus' strength. This is what he's really good at. When they're down, he knows how to flip it around and use oh. it against their opponent. So what's gonna do? What are they gonna do for the next do? match? For the next game? Marky, what should they do? Marky! Uh, Bigatron! Uh, <laughs> sa tingin ko, ano eh, ilalabas na nila yung mga tinatago nilang bala eh. Oh. Marami pa silang papakita dyan. Alam mo. He oh. knows that they, they're gonna be showing a lot and they're gonna take out their hidden bullets, their hidden cards, their hidden ace. How hard is it, you know this, as a player, how hard is it to bounce back from a 0-2? How difficult? Tingin ko ano, Uh, depende talaga sa mentality ng player. Kung gano'n sila kalakas mentally, gano'n. Kapag ganti ito yung laban, especially pag best of seven. It depends on the mentality of the players, okay. how they're prepared mentally, especially in a best of seven. But do you have any prediction for this match, this grand final match, Mark Yandlar? Prediction? Uh, Gua, still blacklist. Uh, uh, blacklist? Score? First, okay, okay. Dilar, get everybody to cheer for Blacklist. Let's go. Blacklist, hashtag break the code. Oh, Blacklist, hashtag break the code. Okay, are you? Echo loud, echo proud. Pinas lang malakas, let's go. Echo loud, echo proud. Pinas lang malakas, let's go. Let's go, casters. Here from our M3 Grand Finalists now playing for Indonesian teams, Marky and Dilar. Before we talk about how we're gonna set up for game three, how possibly Blacklist could start making their comeback, I'd like to tell you all about Gank. Never got a style when you wear and game with Gank, a lifestyle fashion brand made for the modern gamer and is the M4 World Championship official merchandise partner. Grab the M4 merchandise at www.gank.asia today. Mirko, it's odd to see our defending champions be put up against a wall like this. It's strange, very strange, right? Because they even met in the upper brackets, yeah. right? Blacklist and Echo, when they met, Echo were able to take game number one. But then game number two, you saw that Blacklist was able to fight back. Here, you can see that Echo, we mentioned this earlier on as well, they have learned and they have progressed through the lower brackets, now two and zero up against Blacklist International, who are still, you know, playing the same way that they did in the upper brackets. Now, here is, um, this is where me, as an analyst, I'm gonna give my opinions, because as we're looking at the Hero Pick recap, I'm actually gonna talk about how they're playing the map, because 
in the game, in Mobile Legends Bang Bang, it's about a game of trades. What do you want to trade for something else? Do you trade kills for objectives? Do you trade objectives for kills? Do you trade your buff in order to get your opponent's buff? And the way that Echo has been setting things up, they're setting up by focusing on one lane, getting a lot of resources there, and setting up a potential backdoor for Benny Cutie. So every single turret that they get is they're setting for a checkmate. So what Blacklist have to do is actually put the aggression onto Echo. Either if they do want to scale up, make sure they have the composition that can allow them to protect their own turrets because I kind of feel like giving the first tier and second tier turret on either side lane is very dangerous going up against Echo. So either increase the tempo of your own play to make sure that Echo cannot push or just make sure that they draft something that can allow them to actually protect the turrets because this is the name of the game. Protect your house, protect your turrets. They tried that a bit, right? I mean, they, they went for the Beatrix, pretty good high ground with the Bennett. They went for the Valentina to try to steal the IMU because, again, the Yeev was banned out. But what I, what I personally want to talk about is the damage allocation, right? The targeting, because if you saw the hero recap earlier, in terms of damage, Blacklist was doing, were doing more. Blacklist were doing more damage consistently as well with the Beatrix, the Joy, and the Valentina. How was Echo able to win that? It's the allocation of that damage, right? It was always placed to the enemy backline, which is Blacklist. Now, Blacklist's back, backline is always the target of Benny, of Sanji, and as well as Sanford on the glue, who did more damage than Benny. So that just makes it super impressive how Benny was able to get the MVP, get the most kills in the game, but dealing the third most damage. I mean, you got to put into consideration, just like you said, damage allocation, because if you do a lot of damage, but you do a lot of damage to a person that has very low HP, you're not going to look exactly. like you're doing a lot of damage compared to someone who's just attacking someone that just doesn't die, that just keep on regening. And that's exactly the job that Sanford has most games, right? Uh -huh. Cut into the back line, make that back line scramble, and then have Benny Cutie or Sanji ruin whatever is left of that. And with that being said, it's just moments away for us going into game number three, and we'll see exactly how far Echo wants to take this momentum and how they're going to use that. And we'll see exactly how Oh My Venus shot calling and leadership is going to come into a moment like this for their team, wherein their backs are against the wall. It's not quite match point just yet, but this is dire straits. Agents all around the world, I know for sure, even here in Tennis and Sinayan, are feeling the pressure. Definitely, right? As the defending champion, making it all the way here to a back-to-back -back grand final. There's a lot of pressure on their shoulders already. Yeah. On top of that, Echo, the young blood, Sanji Sanford, 16-17. They want that title. They're hungry for it. And it's right here, center stage, seconds away from the draft. We're going into game number three. Coaches and analysts have major decisions to make. What are we opening up for trade? It's Echo now on the play. Blue side, banning out the Diggy, the Estes, and the Glue, while Blacklist take out the Cho, the one one in the Eve. I just want to say one thing. Echo, they're showing full respect to Blacklist International. Their first pick, they're betting out the Estes as well as the Diggy because if they can always make sure that they're getting Oheb as well as Haji, the only way that they can be saved is having a little bit more HP. So getting that out of the way, I really feel like Echo has broken the code. As long as they can sustain long in the fight, then it's GG because Wise can be in front all he wants. We really don't care. Oh, heaven, Haji is not there. We're going to win. But sacrificing the Frederick, they're getting the Frederick for themselves and letting go of the carry. How do you feel about this? I feel like it's a risk that Coach Treb and Dick are willing to take. Wow. And now even the far side is out of Sanji's hands. But oh they have God. a response just as quickly. Oh my this God. Is, this oh. is, this oh is God. Echo showing preparedness showing momentum, showing courage. And they showing they know what, what Blacklist is going to go for. Yeah, just like how Blacklist, Oh My Venus specifically, is ready for that Estes ban. Echo seems to have a uh, play out of their playbook as well. There's so much to play with now if you're Echo, right? On it's insane. Fredrin first pick, the carry was responded with. That was a good pick by them. But then, hey, Echo banned the Estes and the Diggy. Usually you'd see the, the carry, the Kaja here. Kaja was open. They also answered that backline 
threat that uh, Blacklist have yeah. with their own uh, here in the Lapu Lapu. They can dive. This is such a good composition already for them, and you can see what they want to ban next. It's Barats. Every single time, they understand who to ban for. In game number one, it was Venus who was targeted. Game number two, you can see a mix. Now, they noticed, hey, we picked up a hero for Wise, and he hasn't picked up a hero in the first phase. It's time to really go down and ban him out. How do you feel about this coat, LaFell? Wise, who's confident in winning the M4 World Championship again because he's the only one who didn't use any assassins. He has a thousand confidence, but how is that going to come into play here? Because that's a lot of non-assassins being banned out, specifically the Barat, and then his Frederick's taken away from him as well. I think what he's really trying to convey is that I don't bend towards the meta. The meta bends towards me. That's why he's really confident because people can tell him all day that, oh, the Ling is good, Hayabusa is broken and everything like that. And he's like, sure, but my name is Wise. I choose what I want to play. And now looking at Barats and Akai getting banned, what is he going to play? But I will say, I'm not actually looking at Wise to really change the game. If he does, then that's great. I'm actually looking at Edward because I kind of feel like Edward is the key going up against this kind of kind of draft, seeing the Kaja, seeing the Lao Lapu, seeing the Frederick. He should be the, 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 the space maker and the initiator for Blacklist International to make sure that Oheb and Oh My Venus have optimal way to actually go into a fight. The thing is, Blacklist International, they've tried that, right? They gave Benedetta a playmaking hero to Edward. In the second game, they gave him glue to buy a little more time, play as a distract. Oh no, sorry, Joy, my bad. Uh, distract, right? But it did work both times. Now, what's open for him is that Benedetta, right? Wise is going to pick up that box here first. I was actually thinking the Valentina in the jungle. We haven't seen it in a long time, but with the Kaja having that Divine Judgment, it's a good ult to take. Benny still wants to play that Brody, knows that up against the carry, he actually has a bigger advantage here compared to last game in terms of just laning. If anything, since the Valentina is not banned, might go into the hands of Echo, oh. but it looks like Coach Treb and Coach Tekta are reading into it. I think they're afraid that Bonchan and Master Basics are ready for it. Because again, it's wide open, right? But you need a good level of burst mm -hmm. to make Echo's lineup work. I think the better option here would be the Lilia, right? You get a bit more sustainability. You already have such a good composition to dive in, but it does seem like they... Whoa! 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 You... Nope, not the Valentina, what? not the Lilia. They want to go in! Dude, it's like, let's end Lavelle, this game as quickly as possible. They want to go in. Dude, I'm loving this. Okay, so Edward picks up the Yuzong. And again, this is what I want to see because he has to be the one to dictate the fight. He has to go in. But man, oh man, the burst. Gaja picks wow. up anyone. You got the Gushin. You got the Brody. I, okay, here's the thing. I love the draft. <laughs> Works or not. I love the draft. Yep, this is a throwback to about two or three months ago when MPL Philippines, MYID were in season 10. Gushin was a hot pick. Gushin went through a career renaissance, was picked right out of ranked games into the pro scene. And here it looks like Echo are going for match point with it. Will they be able to do that? Blacklist have a solid lineup as well. Signature picks all across. What's this Yuzhong gonna do in the hands of Agent Zero? Is that enough? of a instrument, of a tool to draw a line straight into the backline? Because what's the backline even for Echo? It's just Benny. Dude, honestly, I kind of feel like it is enough because just make sure everyone is close enough together because you're just trying to distract. You're letting everyone else do the damage. We'll see how fast Echo can go and how Blacklist answers back. This is game three. This is for the M4 World Championships. This is the first Gushin pick and M4 too, right? Fun fact. Yep. Hey, Right during the break, when it was the analyst segment, me and Leo, we were talking about it. We were like, hey, Echo in game three. They got a 2-0 lead. What are they supposed to do? Don't experiment too much in the draft. But here they are, <laughs> experimenting in the draft again. In the world, at the world stage. My dude, this is insane. It's Gushin's debut. I fully trust Coach Treb and Coach Tic Tac and Echo, all right? They're, they're putting on yeah. a show for us. No, I mean, like... It's an experiment in our eyes. Yes. They probably True. trained this for quite a while because, sure. again, looking at Blacklist, look at what happened game number one. Look at what happened game number two. They 
kind of just forget about Weiss. They forget about Oh My Venus, and in a sense, they forget about Edward as well. As long as you get Oheb and Haji, it's all right. You, you probably don't even mind if Sanji dies, if he can get both Haji as well as, Ed, uh, as, well as Oheb. So this is fine. And again, looking at Edward, I'm still looking at him to kind of carry because what he has to do is to start a fight, collect everyone together. That's it. Uh-huh, and they're going to be able to do that but at the midway point. Because again, you're also waiting for Oheb. You're waiting for this carry to hit a power spike because it's a tough way playing a carry into a Brody. It's very tough. The laning here, the matchup is not good for carry at all, right? You're gonna be zoned away from your mini waves constantly. You need your Lolita or your Roma, your jungler to hand. This is where Echo have been utilizing Benny Kinsey's stellar M4 performance. They're always playing around the gold lane, but now it's a turtle. Oh, and also the XP lane, look at this. Sanford and Sanji pressuring Haji and Edward. Lord, oh, turtle very low. Wow, Carl TZ steals it away from Blacklist International like it's nothing. Just walks up like a Chad and uses the retribution. I just gotta say, because we didn't really see, because we're looking at the turtle, I wanna talk about the micromanagement of the wave because Sanji he sacrificed his own wave and look at his Yaoi engages. Divine Josh, put in the Petrofly from Sanji. Now to the Manon Blast, gonna be popped in here, but Yaoi's gonna be able to get away from that one. Not for long as Wise is able to find the kill back. A Romer traded in for the mid laner. Still, Echo takes the trade. Love what you were saying. No, I'm just saying because during that fight, Yaoi didn't even dare to go close to the turtle because he was already at level 3. Sanji with the Gushin went to the EXP lane, absorbed some of that minions, while Yaoi secured the entire minion wave in mid, allowed him to get level 4. And we just saw the engagement there, but I want to talk about how Carrie's having a diff uh, difficult time. It's going to be more difficult now that Yaoi already has the Divine Judgment, so Oheb, they had the bad time before, it's going to get worse. Oh, and that's why I think... King Wise and Queen V are going ahead alongside Haji. So again, they're, they're, they're leaving Agent Zero here to make the best of this dead lane against Sanford's Lapu Lapu. We're about 30 seconds and a quarter away from a Turtle. Once more, Echo got that handily. There's a lot of burst coming in from the Orcas, giving them a 300, 400 gold lead. And in terms of items, is that enough? Oh, there's a pull! That's the Divine Judgment, and that's all the damage placed on Benny. Not gonna use the torn apart memory just yet. That was a flicker burn in by Venus, and that's a W that Echo wants to take, those small dubs. Yeah, and again, as we said, you're already setting up your own playstyle. Get the level four as quickly as possible. Sure, it was slightly delayed because they went for something in mid, but now you can see they're putting a lot of pressure onto Blacklist International. This is what they've been doing. They're making sure that Blacklist can't stay long in their own lanes. They can't stay long in front of the turrets because they're setting things up. Yaoi is still here. Even if he doesn't go in, just the, 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 the mindset of I could get engaged is very terrifying. Oh, Black Dragon form already. Break it out. It's on to Carl TZ now. And as you can see, Carl TZ is going to be targeted down with a lot of damage. That's going to be the Razor's Wrath to buy a little bit more time, but he will be slain. Sanji finding Venus. Sanji going to be the target right now. Sanji jumps in with a Petrify as well. That's a double kill for the Gushin at M4. Sanford knocked out by the Furious Side. Yeah, we're going to be able to dodge away right there from the skill shot from Edward. But Edward's going to be targeted down now. Sanji looking for it, gets it, and it's a triple kill. Unofficial, but still a triple kill for the Gushin that's making its debut on the world stage in the grand finals. And this propels Echo about a thousand gold ahead, and it's just back to business. Carl DZ making quick work of this turtle. Honestly, in that team fight as well, Oh My Venus had a very good shot of using the Nominum Blast, but then gets cancelled by Yaoi, pulling him to the side, saying, No, 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 my team can't handle itself. And Oh My Venus engages of Yaoi, and wow. Yaoi escapes that. Using the flicker, but again, it's all all right because Echo, they're in control. Even in the team fight, they're micromanaging everyone's skills, everyone's ults to make sure that they don't get punished. To making sure that the Orcas are always going to be the one getting those kills. And because of that, that pressure in the bottom lane and the relative absence of Blacklist from those responses in the bottom after the turtle take, they got pushed on bottom. Oh, it's a fight up top. Haji can be stunned up. Hands up for the air strike. Sanji can be taken low, taken down. Shut down by Haji, but Haji falls as well. Sanford! Oh my god! With the frame of players! Justin flickers forward! He knows exactly what he was doing. He finds two on the board. Not even the observers can believe it. It's what? going ham up top. 
for the House of Highlights. And Sanford just as quickly rotates down bottom. Wise, they're not done with him. They're still going. The torn apart memory slays Wise as they pick up the tier one in the gold lane. 3,000 gold lead. Conversion through the roof for Echo here. They're taking trades. They're taking bodies, taking turrets. Now 30 seconds away from the turret. Where does Blacklist find an angle for a comeback? Okay, now we're looking on my Venus is going to get punished. Now you see him, now you don't! Two members disappearing from out of nowhere. Oh, have dealing the damage on the Sanford, who's still gonna be able to get away for a bit. Shut down, picked up, and Blacklist International strike back. So what I saw just now, and I kind of think of the same thing, Blacklist, they gotta stay inside the jungle of Echo because they need to apply pressure, and they need vision. Now they don't have both because, again, we talked about it before the game even starts, how Echo is playing. They're pushing one lane, try to get two turrets, and then, they, oh, before that, O'Hare gets caught. Uh-oh, here, Carl Teasy gonna be able to find that. O'Hare falling in the gold lane. Carl Teasy backing off. Edward still wants to commit with a pet petrify and the Furious Dive. Now Sanford on the back line. Getting the stun down, but not gonna be able to find it just yet. Haji with wings by wings and the flicker out. Benny gonna be caught here, stunned up and taken down. Sanford jumping in again. Why still sinking, soaking all the damage in. That's oh! gonna be Saji though, who comes in out of nowhere. Coming in again onto Venus. Not gonna be able to find it just yet. Why still able to get out for a bit with the shield unity? And he gets to safety. It's a two for one in favor of Blacklist. All right, so there's a clap back. Blacklist, given that Echo had to split up their priorities. Turtle says Carl Teasy, no fight, they say. And they're still going! Sanford again! Jumps in, finds Haji. Oh, him trying to melt him down, but it's not gonna be enough as he is actually able to just get the damage out. Oheb now gonna be targeted down so, so low. He flickered out of there, but he's still gonna be caught. Yeah, we find the divine judgment. No commitment just yet. Echo decide to pull back. All right, touche, touche. We pull a treaties for now, yep. eight minutes in, 3K ahead, Echo. What's the item game looking like? The item game is huh. just showing Sanford. He only has the Bloodless Axe as a damage item and the Dominus Eyes just for armor. But again, looking at that, Sanford really should have died. But because Dominus Eyes now lowers the attack speed of your opponent, so Oheb doesn't have maximum attack speed at that point, and he just out heals Oheb. Oh man, you can see the carry is just so behind. Corrosion Staff, Golden Staff, he needs that with the nature, but he also needs an Athena at this point, right? There's so much damage output that Echo can deal, and Blacklist are just not ready for that kind of dive. Yep, uh, it looks like Echo evolved their strategy from game two, when it's not the amount of damage you have, it's where you put it, given the uh, skill shots that Echo have to get in to be able to get these kills. Now 13 to six, it just shows that they are playing off of momentum. Oh, look at this, Oheb! Gonna be stunned up, gonna oh! be taken down by the Total Bomb Memory. Flicker out by Benny Guti is wise. He's looking to re-engage with Edward as well. That's a stun coming in. Benny still able to escape, and he takes the entire team. The match of fire, the Furious Dive connecting on a Benny Guti. And Xiaoyi jumps in. Benny's still alive! Go easy, talk them up. It's a double kill for Santi. Echo Philippines, the house of highlights. And it's just Oh My Venus left. It's as free a lord as it gets for Echo. Barreling on forward, 5k ahead. LaFell, how does Blacklist come back? Blacklist did everything right. That was not a mistake. Like, they managed to get Betty Cutie. Betty Cutie dashes away. He still got caught. And Blacklist, they still lost. Yowie was able to pull Edward away. Like, again, it's not that Blacklist. They did the engage wrong. They did everything right. And it still wasn't enough. That's very discouraging. This breaks the whole concept of the metagame that is box-centric. And it's all about geometry because Echo aren't playing with any clear lines here. They're playing from a point-to-point -point basis, right? Yaoi point and click, Sanji point and click, Benny point and click. Carl is the only one really setting up where Echo can fight and they always find the right places. I honestly don't understand how Sanji keeps getting the hits as well. But right now, Blacklist fights back. Oh, they find a kill onto the jungler. Carl Teasy gonna fall. Yaoi looking for a re-engage as the Lord marches down in the bottom lane. Sanji picking up the tier two in the mid lane. Blacklist International micromanaging the waves properly. Getting it down. Still, 7,000 goalie for Echo. Wise opening up the map. Gets the shield unity down, but will be caught on Divine Judgment. 
Venus coming in, helping his jungler. Now is Benny QT is going to be able to get petrified oh! down. That's going to be Sandy who finds the unstoppable in the back lines with Sanford as well. The San San duo on the back line. Why is going to be targeted down? Sanji not able to connect just yet. You held your breath there. Edward now running away. Yaoi still dishing the damage out of Sanford comes in again. Oh! And Benny with the follow up to finish him off. That sword spike was about an inch away from Wise. If Sanji had it hit, would have been over for King Wise. But that doesn't change the fact that this Lord, Luminous Lord, coming up in about a minute and change, should be lethal. Oh my Venus drops, the Luminous Blast is still going! That's gonna be a Feather Airstrike onto Yao. He's still gonna be able to get out. Athena's shield popped in with Immortality as well. His Torn Apart Memory will be thrown out. Sanford falling to the hands of Oheb, as he is able to find that kill. But it's just a one for one. Echo decides to back off. Base turret still up, except that top side. So in the defense, Blacklist had their priorities split up. Take down members of Echo, clear the waves. Something's gotta give. That's that inhibitor up top. That's permanent damage. Yeah, right now, Echo, they've already set up their checkmate because the Lord is gonna come out. That is going to be something that Blacklist have to contest. Now the question is, can they even contest it? And LaFell, to add to that, it's in the long lane. It's in the opposite lane that Lord is in. It's, it's very clear, it's inevitable that Penny's gonna try to do the same thing. I mean, we talked about this. This is how they play. They set up the map to their own favor to make sure they have multiple ways to actually win the game. They can win through a team fight. They can win through getting Oheb, through getting uh, Haji, or just going straight, beeline to the king, dropping down the base itself. So. This is beautiful coming in from Echo. It's more or less the same thing, but executed in a different way. They're playing with inevitability. Echo have played to a brilliant situation right now. They're 7K ahead. They're making easy work of this Lord, and Wise checking in. V pulls the conceal. They've committed a lot of resources here. That's the Illuminati Blast, not finding anyone. Yaoi looking for the Divine Judgment, able to find Wise as they try to burst down the Lord. Lord can be secured right now. That's going to be the Winner's in by Sanji to buy a little bit more time again. Benny! Oh, yeah. 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 Got it. With the flicker again to find a torn apart memory! Yahweh's looking for more! That's gonna be the petrifying and Furious Dive used up! Sanford jumping in with Bravest Fighter! Go oh my god! Sanford! Benny! Sandy! Caldini! Yahweh! They keep styling on Blacklist! That's four for one! Lord as well, going over to Echo. They're gonna push bottom lane, and they are going to threaten the game, and they catch Oheb! Again, under the base. Oheb very low. It's match point for Echo! The world champions have never been pushed to the limit. Not like this. Echo Express are pummeling on through. They are at match point. Here's the thing, man. What are we watching? We're watching history. Defending champions. Will they be able to defend? Because, again, it's, it's not like reverse sweep doesn't happen. It does happen. Even though Echo, it looks like they're very oppressive, it's not game over because, again, We've seen time and time again. In fact, M1, reverse sweep happened. It can still happen here, but I gotta say, as an analyst, I'm watching the game, game one, game two, game three. They're more or less the same. Go to one lane, grab two turrets, set up the checkmate. In all three games, Echo is able to set up the checkmate. Just honestly, what was that? Every member, I know we said this, we've been saying this, but seeing it in the Grand Finals, where all five members are in form, where all five members know exactly what to do at every given minute, it is a sight to behold. Echo already putting their foot down here. Match point against the defending M4, M3 champions. It is team fight excellence. They, they, they know how to re-engage, they know how to find the right targets, and say what you will about experimentation and how it may have resulted for them in the knockout stage. But now, with a debut in Gushan, Echo puts Blacklist International at match point. They threaten taking home the M4 trophy. And I am here for it. I... Dude, <sighs> Sanford, Lap Lapu, Benikiri with this Brody, it's, uh, they've been saving it. Every play was a TikTok play. And with that, we'd like to remind everybody of the TikTok Live Carnival. Cheer up for M4 and watch 
the matches on TikTok. Participate in Cheer Up for M4 activities by watching M4 matches on TikTok and using M4 exclusive customized gifts to cheer up for the teams. There will be a chance to be on TV too and win abundant gifts. Take a sneak peek at M4 events and be the first to receive info all about these rewards that you can get. The M4 Pass will be available on the 20th of December with exclusive wards such as the Beatrix Light Chaser skin, the Beatrix Stellar Brilliant skin, and the M4 Beatrix figurine. Emotes, sacred statues, spawn effects, recall effects, and avatar borders and trail effects await you. You can get all the special skin as well, the War Lion, for free by completing tasks too. Starting the 24th of December, the M4 support chest will be available in game. Open it to get loads of M4 pass EXP and stand a chance to receive a mysterious gift. On the day of the M4 Grand Finals, that's the day, the 15th of January, expect to get an Avatar Border for free. In the M4 Battle Night event, that's on the 21st, unlock a skin chest by completing tasks and pick a skin of your choice within the chest. Use the hashtags Mobile Legends Bang Bang, hashtag MLBBM4, and hashtag Dare to be Great when talking about it on social media. Speaking of which, Sokhmed should be going wild right now. Oh, yeah. Echo at 3 0. Echo at 3 0. Yo, you know what? The chat, everyone watching, let's talk about Sanford. Sanji and Benicuti, that was amazing. Make them trend. Folks, we'd love to talk forever about it, but we need to throw it over to our analysts to break it down further. Thank you, casters. Breaking news, a revolution is about to begin. A new generation of Filipino mobile legends is here today, and we're here to break it down for you step by step. My name's Kitty Q. This is gonna be Assassin Dave with Wolf here on the stand. Gushin, boys, the top topic of this match. Walk me through this. Sanji Gaming, and also Sanford Gaming, but Sanji Gaming, right? That was San San Gaming. I mean, like, what else can you describe it? Oh man, it's very difficult to, to really not talk about both Sanji and Sanford. The fact that they are the youngest players, at least in this grand final, and they're really looking like they're the boss. Sanford was amazing. And the casters were really talking so much about it. We were talking about it during uh, when we were watching the game. Sanford was on point, on the mark, and even Sanji with his Gushin play, he outstyled Blackers International in game number three. The young fingers. That's all I can say. <laughs> way too good. Way too good. Really way too good overall. I mean, I have to give it to Samford here. I really hope he gets an MVP or even Sanji. Both of them absolutely deserve it. But what could have Blacklist could have done in this particular situation? Oh, they really wanted to go for the burst down with all of their magic damage, right? Even when you think about the Baxia, you want to make sure that Echo will not be able to sustain. However, they kind of lost the integrity of their Lord fight. Whereas for Echo, you can see with Carl TZ the Frederick, the ultimate, use it together with the Retribution, Turtle 1 belongs to Echo. Eventually, they itemize properly with double Athena Shield on both RTC and Yaoi, making it so that Blacklist International had lack, severe lack of damage. I mean, severe lack of damage is an understatement overall. I feel like the preparation coming in from yes. Echo is, is beyond. They know every move coming out from Blacklist. They knew that Haji was going to come in late. They knew how they wanted to move across the map. They're pathing of all things. And also, take a look at the damage dealt, right? 214,000 compared to 160k. The whole game, you can see Echo was just more open to do damage, right? We were in the backstage talking about, okay, what can be the mid lane pick? Maybe it's Valentina was still open. You got so many great all you can copy, right? The Farce all, Lolita all. There's so many good all. But they decided to go with the burst. They have the Kaja played by Yaoi. And Echo's playing really decisive and aggressive today, right? That's shown from the damage. That's shown from the damage participation from Sunji. 74% kill participation. Whoo, Yaoi and an entire Echo, they're just popping out today. I mean, like, this is match point now yeah. for Blacklist. I mean, for, I mean, for Echo, a Blacklist, they really have to step it up. You know, I think that Echo really prepared for this because when they went up against RRQ yesterday during the, the finals, the lower bracket finals, they went for the macro Echo Nomics. Right? They, they, took, they took the map. This time, we're so aggressive. The Echo Nexion was really. <laughs> Strong today. More like the echo location coming off of the Orca Pod. Sanford, our Woo! MVP of this game. I don't think anybody has any doubts overall. Dude. And honestly, with the performance coming in from Sanford alone throughout this series so far, I, I am getting M1 
vibes I when know. Luminaire was nominated to be the MVP. Yeah, Gideon was yelling, like, even when we were backstage, <laughs> just like standing, jumping out of the seas, looking at the, yeah. the play from Sanford. This guy is mechanic god, and on top I of know. that, on top of the fact, he also a macro god, right? He was rotating yeah. from bottom lane to top lane without losing the bottom tier one tower, yeah. finding the flank, finding double kill onto the back line blacklist. Oh my Ooh. goodness, what a player. Let's take a look off the oh, heat map room. Okay. Five to ten minutes off this player. Oh, I, I can really fairly remember what he did into the top lane, but he was literally over the map, right? At least on the side of uh, Echo, they dominated. Now, I want to say, you did say M1 vibes, right? For me, it was M2 vibes. Remember when Ruby Didi made that iconic play where everybody will remember that Ruby Didi asked the Ruby Didi play? Absolutely. I think we're going to see the Sanford play. Utilize the Bravest Fighter to the Flicker with a very off, um, off angle onto the top lane under the turret, catching two members of Blacklist International. He did the Sanford, bro. Dude. He's literally got a font after him at this point. Nobody knows what the font is exactly, but he knows he made a name staple of the word. Well done to Samford overall, an absolute monster. And the, just the spatial awareness and the foreshadowing that he could perceive in these games. What a boss. Yes, who else but Samford to pull off a Samford play here? Let's take a look at the first turtle. You can see Sanji and Samford onto the back line. The Goosh, God. the Sen Sen combo, right? That's and it. this is where Lapu with the Bravest Fighter into the Flicker onto the back line there here. Yeah, look at this! Oh! So beautifully done. He knew the angle. Ooh. He first saw it. This man looks into the future. Look in the future and look at Sanji at the same time assassinating the back line along with the help of Sanford. Even though he eventually fall right here, but at what cost? Every time for Blacklist, this is a heavy toe if you try to target Sanford. And over here, I don't think even Lapu died. The, the yeah. amount of like determination Echo has right. on diving, on doing the damage, not being afraid, not holding back is insane in this yeah. game. This was the Echo Trojan horse play where they yep. did try to attack out one of the members of Blacklist and then they bait him out. Eventually just running down the members of Blacklist International. Again into the front lines, you can see Sanford, but my oh my, Bandit Cutie. Oh my goodness, everybody's just doing well, actually, from the side of Echo. Oh, so brutal, so beautiful. The highest class of Mobile Legends we have ever seen. I cannot believe we get to witness this. We are just mere mortals watching gods battle it out here in Jakarta. Isn't every M-Series is making a brand new star, right? And, so. and this M-Series seems like Sanford is in the making right now, right? Of that where every single strike he's, he's taken, every single move he's building is a strike towards that FMVP. It truly is. But match point for Echo right now. For us here at the stand, we're going to be signing off. Casters, take it away. Away we shall take it. Welcome back. We're setting up for game four. Echo have pushed the defending champions into match point. At your service, as always, my name is Leo. Joined here by Mirko and LaFell. And it's fair to say that we can't stop singing the praises for Echo. Oh, yeah. But now we have to consider what exactly does Blacklist International have to do to bounce back? Before I even say that, I just want to protect my good friend, Assassin Dave. When he said the F MVP, he meant the finals MVP. Yes. Yeah. Context is important, ladies and gentlemen. Context. Context. All right, back to the topic, right? Blacklist, how do they come back from this? They got to start from the drafts, right? Because the drafts here, I believe, have been good. They have been responding. But with the Farsa in the first phase, I understand why it's Pryo. But you gotta understand that the Lapu of Sanford, or even just the Yuzong, the Benedetta, anything that can dive into the back line that Sanford still has to play with, you need to respect that, right? And I think right now, with the Diggy and the Estes band out, they need to respect that more than ever. Forgive me for saying, but I kind of feel like it's not about the draft anymore. Because I think yeah. just the bands itself is already pretty great. Exactly. But the thing is, Looking at how Echo has been playing, it's not that they've been playing the exact same heroes over and over again. They change, but the way they execute it is roughly the same. Because even in game number three, like I said, Yaoi getting level four, and then where do they pressure? Oheb. Oheb Haji. Oheb Haji. Don't let these two play. And then you win the game because you don't have to change too much of how you approach the game. You just adapt to it. It's like, okay, whatever you guys pick, we'll still be able to do what we did in game number one, two, and three. And if you're looking at game three, you're talking about impact heroes and players. You're seeing Sanford clearly, right? Wow. Our MVP for game three. But 
for Blacklist, it was wise. He was trying to do too much. He was trying to help set up ganks. He was looking at objectives, vision for his team, peeling. And again, where do you place yourself when you're getting pressured by one such Sanford? And even Sanju debuted the Gusha. That's a lot of burst. I I don't I, know how to answer that question, right? I, there, I, is, there is no answer. Dude, there I, is no answer. It's You're right. it's, it's so tough, man. I, I believe, again, we mentioned it in game, the execution, how they were playing. They did the best they could. It was literally the best case scenario for them in terms of how they were rotating, how they were looking for fights, how they were prioritizing targets, too. They went into Benny, who was overextending, who was overcommitting, but they weren't able to find it. If I'm allowed to say so, this might sound like heresy, but the way Echo is playing now, so far in these three games, again, you mentioned it's not like they're trying out two crazy things no. or introducing too many elements into their draft. It's like they're the new Blacklist. They just need to change a few things and then approach it the same way. But instead of the whole calculated and slow-paced and very deliberate way of taking yep. games, dominating, the difference is Echo is explosive. In, in my personal opinion or my personal view, is just that make the game simple. Trust your player's mechanics because that's what's been going on. Getting two turrets. Who do you catch? Oheb and Haji. Don't think about anyone else. Trust your instincts. Trust your mechanics because being on the world stage, you have so many things to think about. You're thinking about the hundreds of thousands of people watching you play. The crowd here roaring. The players are hearing it all. We casters are talking about their game. You have to be able to shut everything quietly, simplify it, and then just play your game. And we'll see if that will be enough for Blacklist International to dent Echo's record. Because so far, Echo have been flawless. They have executed everything perfectly, including the draft. We're about to go into game number four, major decisions are about to be made here. It's Blacklist on the play, Echo answering back. There goes the Cho, there goes the Kaja. Echo bans out the Wan Wan and the Estes. Man, last game, game number three. In the draft, Blacklist International were able to secure second pick. That was the most, well, th that side is the most success they found Over in Over 72% 72 win rate on the red side as the second pick. Echo just shattered that, and now they're taking back the second pick away from Blacklist International, who are forced, again, to their first pick. It's not a bad win rate for them. It's still, still like 60%. But Echo, this is where they shine in the first pick, and in the second pick here, we're gonna see Blacklist securing the Yeeve. Echo, what do they respond with? They respond with Glue and Fredrin. Deja Vu. Yeah, right now, whatever Blacklist brings out, this has to be their absolute best yeah. round because right now Echo is feeling pretty good, but for Blacklist, this is a best of one. And Echo continues the trend, not allowing the Queen to use the Estes. They managed to get the Diggy, but if you see a Diggy, what do you have to do? You have to kill the Diggy over and over and over and over again. So now I kind of feel like Echo, they completely expected this. So. Even though, right now, Blacklist, it seems like they're getting their heroes. I have this feeling in the back of my head, Echo is actually drafting for Blacklist. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with you. Given how fast they're responding, given how, in a split second, Fredrin, Glue. But this time around, it seems like they're more deliberate. They have to consider. But just as quickly, all right, here's the Hilda. Last time we saw the Hilda, played by Echo, wasn't so good. What might make the difference here, Mirko? Well, I think what makes the difference here, or what can make the difference here, is Echo banning out the gold laners, right? They've already gotten the 1-1 one, one and the carry out. This is their opportunity. They have the first pick in the second phase. This is the time to ban out the gold lane, but instead, wow. they are still going, okay. respecting Edward. So, I think right now, there's th they're thinking, hey, we've gone rid of the 1-1 one, one and the carry. These two pose the most threat towards our composition. Might as well set up for Benny, right? Give him more room to play by banning out the backline threat. People who can dive like the Lapu, maybe even the Yuzong next. Yeah, looking at Lapu getting banned, this does show that 
Echo, perhaps they want to go for the Brody again because not a lot of mobility, so perhaps could be punished by, like you said, yeah. like a Lalapu, like a, like a Yuzong. And the fact that they're picking up the Hilda, the only thing that I can think about, because usually you pick the Hilda to fight against Assassins, but you can also fight against Elaine going up with, with the Diggy because, sure, usually people take supports, healing supports, kind of like a Rafaela just to top yourself off, but you're still giving free stats over to Diggy. With a Hilda, you could Your die early. So you're kind of like countering the Diggy by just putting a lot of pressure. Hey, if you want to throw bombs, I'm going to drop my alive. hammer, my axe onto you. Yeah. And I've never seen a bird liking an axe to a head. To the head. I've most, never seen anyone. Yeah, most living things yeah. don't like access to their head. Real quick, still doesn't have a hero here for himself what? in the draft. Let's talk about Benny Cutie. For me, the thing I changed the most is my mindset. It was like I was holding back. Maybe because I'm scared other people will blame me. But this M series, it's like I'm all out no matter what happens. That's it. So that's what is just powering Benny Cutie here in the M series in the grand final stage is. He doesn't care about what the yeah. others think anymore. It's just for him and for his team. As a veteran, he's got nothing to lose now, right? He is in the biggest Your stage. And they pick up the Lunox. And this is such a brilliant Lunox pick because it's a flex pick. Yeah, it's still flexible. They've saved the mid lane and the gold lane is the last pick. And now you really see it, right? The Barats was picked up. The Lunox was left open. They went for the Harith. And this flex pick is going to cause havoc for Blacklist International. I'm going to call it out. Echo. The moment they win the jungle fight, I'm gonna say it's over. Because they can establish jungle control with the Frederick, with the Glue, with the Hilda. Yeah. And then the damage is there. They already have the Lunox. With this kind of draft, you can spiral out of control. You can build a hurricane, and it's, and it's a hurricane that's very difficult to stop. Yeah, this is uh, very similar to uh, what they did already in this series alone. So the answer from Blacks International seems to be the Beatrix and the Benedetta. Some classic picks from Blacklist International here. The choice is murder. And I was wondering, how are they going to solve the range difficulty and difference between the Eve and whatever mid laner oh is going to be here for Echo? And here's how they do it with Sanji's savior. It's not enough that you have very tanky front lines. Now you got a mystic field to think about. Exactly. Blacklist, they want to they want to clump up together. They're going to get punished if they do. And like I said, this just further solidifies if you're going to fight around in the jungle, the jungle is very tight spaces. There's no, not many places that you can maneuver around the Mystic Field. All they got to do right now for Echo, crush two, just, just, just take two turrets in any lane and then establish jungle control. This is a very scary draft. Xavier is one of the heroes that forces the time journey out the best. Yeah. The Mystic Fields. Getting two or three or even just one Pryo member will force that time journey to come out and the damage as well from the Hilda early on. That's what they want to do. It's low cost efficiency at the bane of your opponent's lineup. Will Blacklist bounce back because this is the last chance. Echo are forcing them into match point. Game number four in this best of seven for the World Championship. The Right now, Echo, they're super dominant. Who would have thought that the grand finals of M4 will be looking like this? Echo and Blacklist International. I'm looking at Yaoi, I'm looking at this Hilda. It looks like Yaoi will just chase absolutely anyone who wants to pressure Haji. And again, remember the game plan. Don't diverge too far. Haji, Oheb, don't let them be free. That's all you gotta do. And guess what? Winning lane for Sanford too. Edward gonna have a tough time in the mid lane. Haji should be able to win this out in a 1v1, but it's never the case with the Hilda roaming across the map. The Mystic Field is doing work already. Yep, and it's not like there's much of a punish from Blacklist, not quite yet. So we're waiting for them to hit that power spike, put items on Oheb, maybe have Edward win a 1v1 or at least a pickoff before the last turtle spawns. And it's that weird timing that Blacklist have to play around as Echo makes their presence known up top before making for turtle 30 seconds from now. Looking at the situation again, Yaoi not diverging. Just go to the mid, go to the goal lane. He's trying to create space. Right now, Yaoi is getting caught. Can Blacklist even execute a kill? I don't think so. No one can catch him and they don't have the damage. No kill pressure. Not, not enough, right? Early on. Oheb is kind of a safe lane on the Beatrix. Venus can have a, some sort of pick potential with a reverse time, but then the case is you're trying to catch 
Uh, Hilda, with yep. Sprint. I don't think you're going to be able to do that early on. That is a uh, practice in uh, futility, if I've ever seen one. Now, Yaoi pushing away Oheb. And the thing is, this was a 3v2 situation about a minute ago. And what this allows is for Echo to have a priority with the turtle. They're already pushing for it. Carl Teasy and Sanford. And that range advantage is already doing work right now. Carl Teasy on Lord. Edward trying to steal it, but with no retribution. Carl TZ is just going to be able to poke Edward down, securing the first objective of the game with no trades on the board. And look at Sanford already oppressing. Oh no, this is a disaster oh! for Black Rose Internationals. Wise is going to be able to pop the death of his welcome. But now it's Sanford who's on the split split. It's the first blood over to Echo. Haji looking for some compensation, but that's going to be Yaoi who tries Wait. to help him out. The split split's there for Sanford. He gets out. Venus trying to find that kill off. Reverse time, bringing it back. But Sanford's still alive. Has the slam slam and the fast pass and Haji gets picked off. Sanford is still alive and Yaoi is beating Oham oh. with a dotting line as well. Oham forced the flicker out. The time journey comes in. 1,000 gold lead in three minutes, Yaoi. Oh my goodness. Close call. Yeah, right now again, look at the segment being set up. Echo, who are they pressuring? Haji, as well as Oheb, and now, just for addition, Wise as well. They're, push, they're pushing around mid. They're pushing around the gold lane, and now it looks like they could have a possibility of controlling the jungle. We predicted it, and now Echo, they're slowly but surely making it happen. LaFell, up top. Benny Cutie has chipped away at almost a whole shield. Three minutes mage. in, three minutes in, and they're about 2k ahead. What do you have to say, LaFell? You know, that's a mage. You're thinking of probably like, hey, that's what Bruno does to a turret. That's what Brody does to a turret. Hey, Lunox is here too. Ooh. It's a good snipe by Oheb, getting a trade back. Wise now looking for it, but that's the Lunox right there. The brilliance is always ready to get you out of these tough situations. Oh, look at Carl Teasy, the angle. Spots out V, forces out a time's journey. Oh! That's it, that's a time journey baited out. Wise for the death of his welcome onto Call Teasy, but the damage will not be enough just yet. Call Teasy can low, has the appraiser's wrath, gets back Whoa! to full HP, the dotting line almost sniping Venus. But guess who's here? Sanford's looking for the dive. Now, not gonna be able to find it just yet. Pops the split split. Edward trying to poke him down. As Echo will disengage. Four minutes in, Echo has already cornered Black. Forced them with an early Ube just to protect Oheb. Yeah, and again, look at what they're doing. They're sacrificing the EXP lane, going all the way to the goal lane, trying to win that lane. And now, because they're forced to be in the long lane. Oheb, Oheb, Oheb. Oh my goodness, Oheb's gonna be killed! Solo, no, has help from Benny a bit. Venus finds a trade, but it's a gold laner for a roamer. Dude, right now, Echo, Johnny they're Lyle. really setting it up. There's no way for Blacklist to hide. Echo is not just forcing Blacklist to back away. They're forcing them to be in a position of getting attacked from all sides of the map. Five minutes in, they're a thousand gold ahead of the LaFell threshold. Is this the point wherein you say it's gonna be difficult to come back because the early game clearly went over to Echo? They got one turret. What they gotta do? Grab another one and Betty Cutie even secures the gold crab. But after this, you gotta control the jungle. After you do that, it's gonna be crazy because even looking at Haji right now, already completing the Clock of Destiny. He could have completed Enchanted Talisman first, but he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna go for damage. The uncharacteristic miss, too, from Oheb signals something that's even worse than just losing. Getting tilted in the game, in the final game, that can be the final game, right? How is their mental looking? I'm hoping that that's not the case. Again, world champions are not built without pressure, without turmoil, without struggle. And this is a struggle of all struggles. How do you come back from a six minute game? 3K behind Haji, trying to space out so that Wise can come back. Oh, then is welcome. But the Mystic Field now, Sanji with the Dawning Light as well. Now popping, that's the mobility. Carl oh. Tizi jumps in and the killing spree picked up by Sanji. Now in the top lane, Edward finding a trade onto the objective now as he goes in onto the mini waves. Benny is still there. Edward now gonna be able to dash away. Benny flickering forward, eye for an eye by Edward, getting out to safety as he finds a trade finally for Blacklist. Agent Zero gets away with his life. Close call from Sanji. Yeah, right now Sanji, 3-0 zero and 0. It's oh, just gonna get stronger man. and now Oheb getting pressured. 
Again, Sanford flickering forward. Oh, have forced to flicker out with the time turn as well. Oh! Sanford still going through with Yo, here's one. Well. Archer to tier two. Archer to face turret. They find the kill onto Venus. Yaoi gets traded back. Sanford as well. No, there's one flex. There you go. You can't get out of that one. There's no way. So Blacklist found a little bit of redemption on the map. Two kills. They're going to protect their mid lane here, but they concede the last hurdle over to Echo. Still maintaining a 3k gold lead. Right now, Blacklist, they're finding ways. They're finding opportunities. Right now, my Venus gets attacked, and he wow. almost got chunked down. Oh, oh he oh. anyway. There you go. That's the dawning light connecting. Edward going to be taken low as Yaoi jumps in again. Onto Edward right now. As he's looking for the damage, he finds it with the power of wildness. Ohem with the reviewer's passion to clear out the waves. It feels like Blacklist are trying their best to find a trade, but it's always going to Echo's favor. Allow me to hypothesize. LaFell, what's gonna happen if Blacklist fights Echo here, mano y mano, every single time? If they try to trade, what happens? Will that eventually lead to a comeback or will that be punished by Echo? Because again, 3K, that's about a main item for a core. Not yet, because Edward is the one dealing, dealing the most amount of damage. Oheb, not just yet, because Carl TZ will always be in front. You can't shred that, because right now, he only has the Blade of Despair. It's not enough. They can fight if they want, but the damage, they have to understand, is on Edward, not on Oheb. Just look at it again, right? I mean, when Sanford can do that, dive into the base turret, sure, he was taken down, but the fact that he still was able to find a trade, it shows how dominant this game has been for Echo. If Blacklist want to come back, they're going to have to wait for those power spikes to hit. And even then, in the late stage, remember, Echo has a Lunox. They have a Xavier. And, and it's, a, it's a delicate dance that Echo have to go with here. Much like a Lord dance that goes for a minute and a half, Echo have to temper between aggression and discipline. They force out a flicker against Sanford down bottom. They push a main artery in mid. Blacklist here employing an Ube. They're letting Agent Zero force out something from Echo. For me, it's not dooming doom for Blacklist because now they're moving around the map. They're making sure they're not getting caught. They're making sure that they don't do mistakes because they will eventually have enough damage. We've seen time and time again, this Beatrix will shred everyone down. Right now, Edward, tr he's trying to slow down the Lord. But I feel like they should let this go. It's just a luminous. It's not that big of a deal. But if they let this go, what can they fight for, right? They're going for trades right now. You can already see it. But Sanji's going to be able to clear out the mid lane. They traded for a tier one down below. For, a, for the first lord of the game, though, I think Echo are more than happy. As a byproduct, the waves are going to be much stronger, right? Empowered yep. minions. Lord's going to march on through top. Lord is set to spawn in the upper half of the map. And this does open up something for Agent Zero and Oheb to push down bottom. But Echo still 4k ahead. And now they're also going to push up top. Oh no, I see what's happening here. They're setting up again for the potential split. Oh man. Again, there's so many things to worry about. If you're Blacklist International, right? Not only just the five members, but how they're playing. They're not just going for team fights, not just for picks. Not just for sieges, but also for back doors, for split pushes. Oheb with one dawning light gets chunked to half HP. With Lord marching down at the top side, it is going to be acting as a distraction. Sanji is going to be taken to a quarter of his HP. Ooh. Lord taken down as Blacklist International are able to micromanage the waves for now. Mid lane going to be pushing in. Benny with the chaos. Oh my goodness, that damage on the Venus is insane. Sanford zoning the other members away, but so far it's an amazing defense by Blacklist International. They force Agents here to come back home. He can't force the issue down bottom in the inhibitor. Lafell, what's the answer here? Lord coming in about two minutes. Again, you just got to wait it out because right now what Blacklist did, they got a lot from the Lord coming in from Echo, actually, because they see, all right, you're, you're going for this objective. They managed to get two turrets down in bottom. That's a lot of gold steel, but oh, have here with like below 50% HP, this is pretty bad. They gotta wait for Echo to overextend and hopefully they can fight back. That's a small dinosaur. Why is not tanky enough? The time journey buys him oh. time, but it only cancels out CC, not damage. Carl TZ with the appraiser's wrath. Haji trying to fight desperately, but the split split connects and it takes him down. Yowie in the midst of the base finds Oheb low. Edward gets a trade. I'm in the top lane. Sanford recalling. Echo looking for the siege into the base turret. Blacklist still able to defend. Two for one. And Agent Zero was not able to do anything up top. 
Oheb didn't fall, so there's some silver lining here, signs of life from Blacks International. Yeah, because again, the name of the game is the Tris right now. Edward going for Sanji, and he's doing a lot of wow. damage. And this is why I say, if Blacklist, they're pressured, we gotta look at Edward. He is the one that could potentially give them this game victory. If Blacklist can pull Akko around, come here, take the bait. My name is Haji, my name is Oheb. Don't you want me? Let, Ak let Edward have the space to try and potentially push, get some gold, get the items, and then try to win the team fight. And this brute force breastplate in Edward's arsenal is gonna be super key. He's gonna be super important in maybe quelling two or three members of Echo, if Echo do send two or three members. I think Echo is just playing their game here. 6k ahead, making a jockey for this Luminous Lord. If they do take this board for free, which is likely, oh lord, that, that's very quick, they're definitely gonna get at least one inhibitor. That was like, what, as fast as securing a buff? That was even faster, Even honestly. faster than faster. securing a buff, yeah. Oh my goodness, Black Wizard International, oh, Edward gets spotted out, that cancels the recall. Edward running for the hills right now, pops in the final blow. Gonna be able to dash for a bit right longer. Sanford looking for the chase, not able to find it. Agent Zero survives, but still, it's Echo who utilizes that to set up in the bottom lane. Looking at this, I, I again, like, I'm still pulling out hope oh. because Blacklist can do a lot. But as we said before the game, Echo, they're scaling. It's not like they're gonna, you know, drop Fall in off. terms of damage. They're just getting stronger and stronger. And now Wise oh. getting pressured. The Mystic Field locking him down. As Wise tries to get out, but Sanford flickers forward, baiting out a time journey. The mid lane base turn is gonna fall right now. As that's gonna be the siege coming in. Sanji flickering out. Edward did not use the final blow. That was a prediction by Sanji that did not work out. But it's still Echo, who are marching, who are knocking on the base of Blacklist International. Bottom side, reverse time, bringing Sanford back, but split split gets him out of there right now. Edward still not popping a final blow just yet, charging up his dashes. And still, it's Echo who are playing it so well. Disciplined. Top lane inhibitor at half health, waves crashing in through bottom. They're waiting for a wave in the mid. Echo here might get punished with the Yaoi. That's the mortality popped in. Edward trying to split this side, but Yaoi gets out of the death and is welcome. Edward trying to find an opening, but will be caught in the Mystic Field. Immobilized and poked down. Echo now onto the purple buff. Two level lead for Carl Teasy against Wise. He takes it away and he walks out. Carl Teasy just ate a face full of Nibiru's passion and walks away from it. Does OM need any more items? I'm wondering if there's enough in the next two or three minutes because this Lord coming in, it's just Luminous, all right? Just a Luminous Lord a minute from now. Looking at the items right now, Blade of Despair, Malefic Roar, as well as the Hunter Strike. In my personal opinion, this is enough. But now, how do you dish out the damage? Because you have enough damage necessary to take down Echo. Because looking at the lineup, the only one that you're going to have problems with is Sanford, as well as Carl Easy, because they do have the blade armor. And the blade armor does hurt going up against a Beatrix. So Beatrix is going to have a little bit of problem there. But the main problem is staying inside the fight. I kind of feel like at this point, Maybe Oheb has to wait for every single item, including the Haas Claw, to stay alive because the problem is not, not about dishing out the damage, it's about staying alive. And how do you stay alive against a lineup that finds angles and forces you to respond like this even without committing? And that's what 8k gold buys you ahead of your opponent. Now, 15 minutes in, about 5 seconds away from this Lord. It's interesting to see that Blacklist, it seems like they're jockeying for position. Should they contest this? This one, I kind of feel like they got to go for a 4-1, but now Wise oh. eating someone. Again, Oheb's going to be chunked low from across the map. Ooh. The snipe not connecting. Yaoi dodging away with the sprint. That's Edward jumping to the back line, but it's not enough damage to take Sanji down. He doesn't even pop the flicker. The Petrify was used already. A lot of resources spent. Sanford now jumping in, donning light, taking Venus to have a half HP. Wise looking for the opening. Edward gonna be caught on the Mystic Field once again as he jumps out with eye for an eye. Venus taken low by Benny and Sanford, who's now on Wise. Bringing him back, immobilizing him. Sanford jumps in again! Oh. He finds it! Venus forced to run away. Haji standing his ground, but Carl Teasy jumps in. The flicker out to safety as Wise is even caught by the Mystic Field. Echo looking to march down. Benny with damage. Appraisal Brad connecting as well. Yaoi finding the kill onto Wise. Yaoi getting out. Sanford immobilizing him. Five members strong, two members down from Blacklist. Just three 
defenders for Blacks International. They still have Haji. Sanji pushing in. Look at Edward. Force got a winner truncheon. The mortality bot as well. Edward gonna be stunned up. He mobilized everything. He's not moving. Edward will fall. He buys the mortality in time, but he's gonna fall again to the damage coming through. The time journey saves it, but the appraiser's wrath takes the queen down. Haji locked out with a mystic field. The dawning light outranging the real world inflation. Sanford finds a double. Echo, they haven't just broken the code. They have shattered it! 4-0 for the Orcas! The age of the Orcas is now! Echo are your M4 World Champions! Winning the game, getting the checkmates, setting everything up right now. Echo from the Philippines is your official M4 World Champions! These young men have worked their lives, committed, sacrificed so much, and now at the top of their game, on the world stage, they dare to be great. And now they can say they are. What a performance once again. Stunning, masterful, class. All the good words that you can use cannot describe how dominantly they were able to take down, not just any team, the defending world champions, the Filipino MPL champions. And to date, we still don't have a back-to-back -back champion. History will still continue having different champions every single year. Echo dominating in war. The new era from the Philippines led by the best in the world, Carl, Carl Teasy. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an honor to be at your service again and again and again. May we make history or a break records. LaFell, any last words? The only words that I can say right now, this is, this five men, including their coaches, are the best in the world. Mirko, best in the world. Echo from the Philippines, once more your world champions. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear from them on stage. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, your M4 world champion. Congratulations to Echo! Whoa! Echo Philippines, they are really loud and they are really proud. Now to award the champion, let's call the presenters of each award. To present the ring, we have Mr. Michael Yaya, UBS Gold Creative Director. To present the medal, we have Mr. Lucas Mao, Managing Director of Moon Dawn Esports, and Mr. Baba Frankie, Secretary General of Esports Federation of Indonesia. We would like to invite our VVIP to come to join us on the stage. Echo has done it! They are the world champion! They are the new kings! of all the regions, the greatest of them all, the super team from the Philippines. Look how proud they are and how happy they are right now. They will be receiving lots of gifts, lots of fortune from this M4 World Championship. Echo, you may now receive your medals and your rings. Oh, the first one is the ring from UBS Gold. Benny Cutie! And also, 
the medal, Sanford! Strongest! 
strongest of all the regions, the strongest team of all. They're loud, they're proud. Eco Philippines. Everybody, when I say echo loud, you say echo, echo proud. proud. Echo loud. Echo proud. Echo loud. Echo proud. One more time, echo loud. Echo proud. We'd like to hear from our champion. First, Benny QD, ikaw ang naging finals MVP. You're the finals MVP, the greatest player of all. How do you feel right now? Ano, nararamdaman ko po sobrang saya tapos ano, hindi, hindi ko po mapaliwanag eh. Gusto ko pong umiyak na ayaw lumabas. Kaya ayun ko po sobrang overwhelming lang siguro sa akin lahat ng pumapasok sa ano, sa sa utak ko, sa puso ko. Yun, hindi ko na alam sasabihin. He is so overwhelmed. He is so happy. He feels like crying but he can't express his emotions right now. He is speechless. Carl TZ. The only, t the only player who has done this two times, world champion. Whoa, two How times. How do you feel? Parehas lang po. The same. It feels the same as Benny Kiri. Yawi, Yawi, you're holding tears back right now. What's going through your mind? Four zeros. Di na po kami first round end seat. Ngayon kami na po pinakamalakas sa buong mundo. First round exit now. They're the strongest team in the world. I have to hear from the youngest one, Sanji Sanford. Ah, uh, para sa akin, uh, nagbunga po lahat ng pag-aarap ko, ay ng mga pag-iirap ko, tsaka mga sacrifices. Ah, uh, para sa papa ko talaga to. This is for his father. All the hard work has finally paid off. Sanji. Um, Sobrang saya kasi yan eh. First time ko lang mag-worlds, tapos ito agad kinalabasan. It's his first world, and now this is the result. One more time everybody, give it up for your M4 World Champion, Echo! They're really doing a great job here. Pinas Lang Malangkas. And for everybody watching online, MLBB has prepared an Easter egg for you to celebrate this wonderful moment. Enter M4 in the chat box and you'll get the M4 champion seal. Collect the seals and exchange them for the M4 final avatar border. Hashtag Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Hashtag MLBB M4 and Dare to be Great. Now we'd also like to thank our sponsors. M4 is powered by Mooton. Presented by TikTok, the official content partner, and supported by Secret Lab, the official gaming chair. We have eSports Stars, our analytical partner, and we have Kang, our official merchandise partner. We have Miwas, our media partner, and last but not least, the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy of the Republic of Indonesia. Thank you everybody for giving us your support. It's been such a wonderful journey. Keep supporting mobile. Bang Bang, and we'll see you in the Philippines for the next world stage. This is Mobile Legends Bang Bang and for World Championship. Dare to be great!
my time, I'm a ball. I'm gonna get this money right. I'm gonna live my best life. They've been talking to me on me. You know, don't never win. I'm controlling all my victory. And something has got to give. Cause this is just what I'm in. And now, I'm in and now. You can't ever, ever, ever break us down. Break us down. I'll be speechless for the stars. I'm gonna show me what they know. And I'll never, ever, ever, ever stop. Won't ever stop. Yeah. Don't just go. I did everything that they said I couldn't Caught my footing 